You got me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Jim's not on his headset right now. What's going on? Okay. 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 All right. We're, we're just, it's business as usual for us, right? And that, and that could come, a network could come back on any time, or you don't see that happening? Yeah. Okay. No change. Yeah, Jim. Jim's on now. I, I'll, I'll update him. No change. Going to record it. IT guys are on their way over. Yes. It's cloudy, cold, and windy in Crawfordsville, Indiana, when the Little Giants of Wabash College and the Hiram College Terriers meet today in North Coast Athletic Conference action. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jim Amadon alongside my broadcast partner, Steve Hoffman, and it's homecoming on the campus of Wabash, and the Little Giants are coming off a big one over Wittenberg a week ago, and today entertain a winless Hiram team. It comes in with an 0-3 record. Right now, we're going to join Dr. Richard Bowen our and the Wabash, by our College, Wabash Glee College Glee Club, as they perform led by our Dr. National Richard Anthem. Bowen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glass, red glass, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Club, under the direction of Dr. Richard Bowen, never disappoints. They uh, perform today in the homecoming alumni chapel with so many uh, alumni back. Steve, it's a festive day here on the, cal on the campus of Wabash College, even though the weather isn't quite what we'd hoped. After a beautiful week, we've got some clouds, some drizzle, and cold weather, but it certainly hasn't dampened the spirit of this crowd. It has not, and the, uh, the weather feels more like a Monon Bell game than a early October homecoming game. But, Jim, you're exactly right. It's, it is a festive time on a Wabash campus. Uh, several things going on. We, we'll talk about the awards chapel uh, as we go along. I know in the game it brings a lot of people back. We have a soccer game going on across Jenison Street in uh, Mud Hollow Stadium. Not faring so well at the moment, but um, it is a festive time. It's a day we all look forward to. Yeah, the uh, campus is decorated. The freshmen have been out decorating in front of the fraternity houses and living units. I look over, I can see the Martindale decoration outside the back of Martindale. And we're excited about today's broadcast, Steve, because the little giants maybe haven't looked as good as they looked last week in a long time. Last week, I think, turned some heads. The 42-14 win over Wittenberg. The 42-14 did turn some heads. And at the end of the day, you know, we ended up rushing for almost 200 yards. It didn't feel like it at halftime, but we just wore them down. Uh, you know that turned some heads around the country a little bit as well. We talked about how well our defense was playing coming into that week, but knowing we hadn't played uh, the quality opponents until we get to Wittenberg, defense still stepped up. Brian Parks won with three interceptions. Brian Parks, three interceptions, took one back for a touchdown, seven quarterback sacks. Little Giants really brought it, and I think they wore down the Tigers by the end of that contest. So the Little Giants riding high, and Coach Rayburn does not want to uh, want, does not want a letdown in this week against a winless Hiram team that has a lot of talented athletes. 
Well, one of the things the Little Giants have to do is get on Hiram early. Wabash is 8-0 and against this Hiram group, all coming after Wabash joined the NCAA or NCAC. Uh, we want to go down for the coin toss? Jim, is that what we do here? Yeah, I think we're going to look at the keys of the ball oh, game. Gotcha. Okay, that's even better. Uh, keys of the game today. Wabash needs to run the football. Uh, this is true most weeks, but uh, it's true today to open up the passing game. Early success I was talking about when this graphic came up in front of you uh, in a game like this. And then we, Wabash needs to play Wabash football and just take care of business. So the captains are at midfield. That's uh, Connor Rice, the junior quarterback, who not only started, he played the whole game last week and looked terrific as the starting quarterback. Uh, Threw for three touchdown passes and uh, led the Little Giants to a big victory. Referee is Grant Henderson. The Little Giants won the toss and deferred to the second half, so the Hiram Terriers will take the ball to start this football game. It worked well for the Little Giants last week. Uh, Wittenberg got one first down on the first drive and then uh, not much, and the Little Giants took off down the field with... Uh, a, a big start last week, went out ahead early, never trailed in the ball game, and really pushed it out of reach in the fourth quarter. Little Giants are wearing their gray uniforms on homecoming. These uh, uniforms made their debut a year ago, and uh, players really like them. That's about all I'll say on that. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how diplomatic you were going to be on that, on that comment. And when we broke them out last year, if I remember... Uh, we were playing Oberlin, who was also gray, and Oberlin was just the opposite of us that day. Oberlin, we had what you see there in your, in your, uh, on your screen. Oberlin had gray pants, white shirts, and gray helmets, yeah. and it was not the prettiest game visually that we've had here. It wasn't much of a game on the field And either. it wasn't either, yeah. So Hiram comes in 0-3, but Steve, uh, you have to be impressed with the size of this offensive line. Right tackle, Miles Whitman is 6'6", 295. Right guard, Deion Coleman, 6 feet, 285 pounds. The little guy is Antoine Hill, the center, at 295 pounds. Jonathan Murphy, freshman left guard, goes 325, plus or minus a biscuit or two. And the left tackle, Jacob White Knight, 6'5", 295. And in fact, if this Hiram offense is going to have any success today against this very good Wabash defense, it, they will need a White Knight. They'll need Jacob White Knight at left tackle protecting the quarterback to be sure. The quarterback is Alec Wells, and we'll talk a little bit more about him as we, as the Hiram offense takes the field. Did you work on that White Knight comment? Well, I guess... Uh, I think I, they won the toss and okay. deferred. All right, Steve, I got it backward. So, Little Cut. Giants will be on offense to start the game, and we will look at our kick returners, Matthew Dickerson and Satchel Burton. The kicker for the Terriers. Number 21, Sam Conway, sophomore from Wycliffe, Ohio. And we'll do what we can with numbers on these great jerseys. It does make it more difficult for us from the top of the box here to see. We are underway at Hollett Little Giants Stadium on homecoming, and it's a squibber that will go out of bounds, and the Little Giants will set up shop first and ten. Let's talk about this offense that looked pretty solid last week under the direction of junior quarterback Connor Rice. Connor's thrown for 485 yards, three touchdowns, completing 62% of his passes. But the Wabash offense starts and ends with Mason Zurich, the all-conference running back, six feet, 225-pound senior, First-team all-conference player averages over five yards per carry, has already scored six touchdowns in the first three games of the season. We'll get the rest of the offensive starters after we get underway here. Right now, it's Connor Rice and the Little Giants offense. Fakes the handoff to Zurich, flips it out to Drake Christian. Drake was very quiet last week, not today. He picks up five yards on the first play of the ball game, and it's good to get Drake started here, Steve. He dropped a few passes last week and never really got untracked and then sustained some cramping and was out of the game. Well, and, and look, Coach Rayburn scripts the first plays of the game, and so he knew exactly what he was going to call there, and I think he probably was thinking exactly what you were just talking about, Jim. Let's get Drake involved, get him back in the game, get him a good catch early. Rice again fakes to Zurich, looks outside, tough throw, but makes the pass out there for the first down. That's Matthew Dickerson who will pick up seven, and the Little Giants are marching just underway at Hollett Little Giant Stadium. That's first a, and ten. That's a scary throw for most quarterbacks for Connor Rice. You know, he's got a strong arm. He can get it out. That's a long way to go. 
uh, you know, it's 25 yards from the middle of the field to the sideline just in itself. This time Zura gets the ball, he goes to the left side, pushes his offensive lineman forward and only picks up a couple. Well, Coach talked about Hiram's defensive line. He thinks they're pretty good against the run, uh, which is why the first key to the game on an earlier graphic was Wabash needs to run the football to start opening up the passing game. Uh, they got some a uh, couple good defensive linemen. He talked about a couple good linebackers, and uh, um, you know, he said it might, they might be tough to run on. Showing blitz, pull off. Rice looking downfield, finds Christian at the high rim 40, and he's wrestled out of bounds at the 39. Nice pickup of 12 yards on second down. Rice looks good early, Steve. He does. He, he shows a good ball. And I, I think even the last game when he was the man of the game as far as playing all game, even last game he came on from beginning of the game to the end, and you can see him starting off right here. He saw the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Just a good decision there. That's an easy throw and catch if they're going to lay off of Drake Christian like that. Hiram defender jump, but got back, low snap, Rice to pass. He's locked on to his receiver, and that's number 16 for the Little Giants. Tom Garrett, he had a big week last week. Tom's a senior from Jamestown, Indiana, went to Western Boone High School, came into the game with seven catches on the season, had a big week last week, and has a big first down right there. Garrett's name was called a lot last week, and, uh, you know, we talked about that when we talked uh, during the week. So, so far, Connor Rice, perfect for the day. 15-yard pickup, but this is Zurich. Makes one cut, gets the ball to the 20-yard line. He'll pick up four. Ball came out. I think Mason fumbled last week, we, Steve. We kept it. He did fumble there. We did keep it. We got lucky there. That was fumbled into the defense, defensive side. So you'd think there have been a lot more white jerseys there than, than red. I'm going to call them red, even though they're gray. Tim Leith, the right guard, recovered the ball. You know, that's a reason why you tell your linemen, never stop, never stop, even if, if you're not blocking anymore. The more people get around the football, the more good things can happen. Hiram blitzes, hits the arm, and Christian may have come up with the ball, but it's a gain of only about a yard. It'll be third down and short. Little Giants driving down to the 16-yard line of Hiram, opening possession of the ball game. Connor's still perfect on the day with that nice catch by Drake, even though his arm got hit there. So he looks very comfortable out there in his first drive and first series. And I say that not only the way he's throwing the ball, but he's getting great protection, and he's making good decisions. Third down and two. Handoff is to Zurek, right side, big hole. He slipped and fell at the 15. He's going to be short. Steve, you know, Steve, he's, he's got... Both shoes taped all the way around. Does that create more? I don't know. Well, I don't know. We saw that a couple times last week when he had a, at least one, I remember, in particular. This time, there'll be no slipping, and he'll stiff arm his way down to the five-yard line. And first down on fourth and one, Mason Zurich bowls his way ahead and gets the ball down to the five-yard line. Yeah, you can see this taping around the ankles and cleat and everything is in right now. Tyler Wade uh, enjoying sunny San Diego. Tyler, we're a little bit jealous. Uh, it is about 45 degrees and windy and cold here. First down a goal, Little Giants fake to Zurich. Rice broken play. Scrambles right, and he's going to dash into the end zone and take a pop at the goal line, but in he goes. Down goes the photographer. Down goes everybody, but not Connor Rice. Well, I'd rather see Connor, you know, lower his shoulder a little bit to get across the line rather than get in the air as he did. Too many bad things can happen. But, you know, Connor's got some athletic abilities. You can see there, a big guy, but he can move. And there's a good look at the skies, as you can see on your screen. Tevin Weaver came in and made the hit at the goal line. Connor Rice uh, looks pretty good as he comes over the sideline, but he took a pop. No question about that. So the Little Giants go 65 yards straight down the field, and Connor Rice was perfect. Five for five passing, 40 yards. Mason Zurich looked good on the ground, had 20 yards, and Connor with the five-yard touchdown run to cap the drive. Now Andrew Tutsi out of the hold of Derek Fox, the putter. Good snap. It's down, up, and good, and just like that, 11-27 to play first quarter. Little Giants. Out in front, 7-0 on homecoming at Hollett Little Giant Stadium. Big crowd still arriving. People are bundled up. It is, uh, this is the chilliest homecoming I can remember, Steve. 
Yeah, I mean, for especially for uh, early October, October 2nd, uh, you know, it's a chilly forecast, and it hasn't gotten any better. It's getting a little worse. We saw a high of 60 early in the week, then a high of 55. I saw this just this morning. Last I checked, it was 50 and breezy and a uh, chance of rain coming in about uh, 3 p.m. The forecast I looked at showed a 60% chance of precipitation at 3. This is a 2 p.m. Eastern kickoff if you're in a different time zone. So it could be some rain over the next hour or two. We'll see what happens. But great start to the Little Giants. Uh, you know, we talked early. Uh, keys of the game number two was to get a good start and have early success, and that's exactly what uh, we did. We didn't want to settle for a field goal there either. We did get, get the first down on the fourth down play to punch it into the end zone. So Ricky Hampton, sophomore from Westmoreland, Pennsylvania, number 23, and number 22, Christian Maynard, sophomore from Spring Hill, Florida, are deep for the Terriers, both standing at about their five-yard line. Andrew Tutsi ready to kick it off. Glad to be on the air today. Good hustle by the Media Center guys. So grateful to have such a great uh, group of uh, people working to get our games on the air week in and week out. Tutsi's kick's a good one, end over end. And that's taken by Hampton. And he tries to get it outside. Got good wheels and had a blocker, but is upended at about the 32-yard line where the Terriers will come out on offense. The quarterback is Alec Wells. We talked about how big that offensive line is. They all average about 300 pounds. Wells is a sophomore from Aurora, Ohio. And he's completed uh, 58 of 115 passes, 618 yards, just over 200 yards a game. He's thrown for three touchdowns, been picked off four times, and I can guarantee you he's never seen a defense this year quite like he will today. In the backfield with him is number four, Danny Robinson, a sophomore from LaBelle, Florida, and Robinson takes the fake, and Wells fires the ball right into the back of the helmet of a player, and down he goes. So Wells is hit on the first play of the ball game, Steve, and those add up as we learned last week. I'm, I was just trying to figure out where he was throwing the ball there. He sure wound up and got rid of it hard. It looked like it hit, uh, and again, I'm having a hard time with our numbers a little bit. It looked like it hit one of our uh, our players in the in the back. Good homecoming crowd, you can see there, nonetheless, with the crowd, or with the, uh, the weather. A lot of red in the stands we like to see. Second down at 10, and that'll be Robinson. Tries to cut it back, runs right smack into the middle of the line. And I got to tell you, Evan Rudder and... Tyler McCullen, that was Evan. He's tough to run through. We didn't call Evan's name a lot last week because Wittenberg kind of got away from the run pretty early, but yep. he's a disruptive force at the nose. Well, and, co and Coach uh, Tim Fincham from Wittenberg said it's one of the best defensive fronts he's seen. Uh, you go right across there with, uh, with the group we have, and Evan, Evan right in the middle of it all as a nose man really allows other people to make plays. Third down and nine, and this is not a situation a young offense wants to be in against this veteran Wabash defense. They will pin their ears back and come. You can see Ethan Burrish is coming unabated, and he Wells gets it off, but it will be short. The ball is complete. Wabash now on third down defense has only given up 10 first downs and now 44 attempts throughout the year. That's a phenomenal third down Average And one of the reasons you can do that, too, in fairness, is because we're getting people in third and long situations, not a whole lot of third and shorts. If you're just tuning in, Wabash got the kick and went right down the field, helped on a fourth and one inside the high run 20. Connor Rice going five for five on that opening drive and end up scoring the touchdown on the ground. Zach Durso is the punter, and he gets off a high, booming kick. Driving Christian back, and Christian just says, no thanks. It'll go to the end zone. So that's 60 yards and a net of 40, and the Little Giants will have the ball at the 20 to start the second drive of the game. We are just underway at homecoming at Hollett Little Giants Stadium. Jim Amadon, Steve Hoffman, Adam Phipps, and the Media Center crew. We're joined by Ben and Ivan up high here, and it, wind is blowing straight in to the uh, top of the press box where we're positioned. So if we sound a little cold, it's because we are. And I see you didn't get that sweatshirt delivered to you yet, Jim. So, yeah, We were a little underdressed today. We thought it was <laughs> at uh, 6 o'clock this morning. It was warmer than it is at 2 p.m. Yep. Connor Rice, drive number two for the Little Giants, standing by himself, has Zurich open in the flat. And he'll pick up maybe five, six perhaps. Well defended that time. Well, don't see that often. Zurich split out, run a little stop route, throw it out to Zurich. 
<laughs> Dee Dee Fleeton in the coverage for the Terriers. As a timeout called, there were way too many players on the field. Hiram hustling a guy off at the last minute, and uh, the Wabash coaches were jumping up and down saying, snap it, snap it, snap it. Yep. So the pass to Zurich is good for six, and Rice is still perfect, six for six in this ball game. Well, you can dial us up, folks. Let us know where you're watching. Uh, Steve Hoffman can be reached on email. Hoffman, H-O-F-F-M-A-N-S. Hoffman S at Wabash.edu. Tell us where you're watching. We'll give you a shout out. I know they're watching in Tallahassee, Florida. My brother and his son. It's 70 degrees and sunny there. Yeah. I bet he told you that in his uh, in his message as well. He did. Warm people like he to say. He sent a picture too. They like nice. to say that. Even even the photo. I know we're watching in the Fort Wayne. Tim Grusenmeyer is one of the first every week, along with Mark Savios, also watching in San Antonio, Texas. Mark did not mention the weather down there. Appreciate Thank you. that, Mark. He did say he's looking forward to, the, forward to watching the halftime festivities. Which we will have those live. We will. I've been uh, psyching myself up for those all week. Connor Rice out of the pistol. Mason Zurich right behind him, second down and four. And the give is to Zurich. He's going left side. He's got some room to run. If he makes one man miss, and he can't, nice play there by the uh, – Middle linebacker Kyle Burchett, a junior, 6'1", 200, 200-pounder out of Fairport Harbor, Ohio. He was the guy that Coach Rayburn said you really have to watch, probably the best defensive player on the squad, the middle linebacker Burchett. So third and one for the Little Giants. A good block in there by the tight end, and Zurich's got more than enough for the first down, has a gain of about eight. Get it out to the 37-yard line, and first down for Wabash. I felt like more before that play, Jim. He's been running. A, he looks a little more tentative. I don't know if you've noticed that a little bit on his runs. I mean, he's got tackled on one-on-one -on -one situations, which doesn't happen. Doesn't happen as very often. often. And he, he has a couple times today. Well, this time he runs into a crowd of Terrier tacklers. Have some fun with that today. Terrier fires tackling. up uh, uh, le the outside linebacker, D.D. D. Fleeton, is a senior from Youngstown. He is uh, certainly the energy of that defense. He's pretty fired up, good athlete, came in, made the stop. Good read on his part. Runs to the far side of the field there where he'll set up shop. Fake to Zurich. That's probably going to be a flag. Well, he's there was nobody. He, there was nobody in the neighborhood at all. Yeah. So Connor Rice unloaded the ball. Not a good decision on his part. I don't know I what think he's thinking on that one. We can. The Hiram coaches are right next to us, and we could hear them get pretty animated. They got exactly the setup they wanted. They had the defense exactly as they wanted it to force a big play there. Well, and what that cost you is five yards. And the from down. the spot of the foul and the down count. So it, it's like you get sacked right there where he threw it, minus five more yards. They're down in about 15, 16. It must not be five extra yards in college. They just spot foul. Third and 16, little Giants have their backs against the wall here. Connor has a lot of time, wings it out to Christian, and a nice breakup on the play by number 10, Andrew Torres, the junior from Cape Coral, Florida. Read that perfectly. That ball was in the air a long time. It's in the air a long time, and it's a long throw uh, all the way down. He did have, I didn't see who it was, I think Dickerson coming over the middle. I thought he had open. and He, he did have Matt over the middle and throw open, him. but he had his, uh, he's had his eyes trained on Christian quite a bit in this ball game. Drake already with three catches, but Derek Fox will punt. Punt returner is Nate Eaton. Good snap, end over end kick. Not terribly pretty, but it might be a good result. A 38 yard kick, no return, and Hiram will be out for the second time here in the ball game. So 7.59 to play here in the first quarter. Little Giants took the opening possession down for a, a touchdown, a 65 yard drive. Five first downs for the Little Giants and uh, Already 83 yards. Hiram with about eight total yards. Seven. Seven, okay. It's about eight. All right, Wells to change the play. Looks to the sideline to get it. Trips to the our side of the field, near side of the field. Danny Robinson there standing in the slot. 
Wells to throw, and not much on it. Akili Tate was the intended receiver, 6'2 junior from Los Angeles. Most of the skilled players on this Hiram offense are from Florida or California, exception being Wells, who's from Aurora, Ohio. And it's interesting because as we were commenting this week, it's, it's, the, skill, it are the, it's the skills players. Robinson tries to find some room, and he'll be bowled under. They'll give him the line of scrimmage, but nothing more than that. Tried to go behind uh, the right tackle, Miles Whitman. And he's a hoss, 6'6", 295. And I, I think that 295 was a few sandwiches ago. Third down and 10 for the Terriers. And it dumps it off to Robinson, who's got maybe enough first down, gets a great block by Whitman. And down the field he goes all the way to the Little Giants 47-yard line. So a huge completion from Wells to Robinson. Be a gain of about 22. We want to apologize. We uh, had some network issues. Trying to get on the air today. We're glad that we are on the air, but we will not be able to bring you instant replay today. We apologize for that. But we will be on YouTube later on, so if you want to watch the game back, you can watch anything you want. First down now for the Terriers, the first first down of the ball game from the Little Giants 47. It's not Robinson, it's his backup, Christian Mayner, and Mayner doesn't get much. Half a yard, maybe. Well, that third down screenplay was... It's a nice call. It's a nice third down play, uh, especially when you're playing a defense that will bring people at times. But uh, don't think we had some good reads from some of our defensive guys, according to the reaction we heard from defensive coordinator Coach Hammer next to us. It's also a nice run, though, and some good blocks out well, in front. Well, he had a 300-pounder down right. there knocking out. <laughs> yeah. Little DeLon Pettifer looked pretty small out there. And DeLon's pretty well put together. No gain. Fake to Robinson. Wells has time. Fires the ball. A little bit behind him, and it was Ludwig who leveled Wells. Connor Ludwig put a little heat on him late. Wells hasn't thrown the ball very well early on here. No, there's only uh, completions have been uh, the screenplay and, and short passes, but nothing down the field. You know, it's tough, though, coming into a game like this, Jim. You're watching, video, you're watching uh, tape of the Wabash defense. And you see the defensive NCAC player of the year last year gets sacked seven times last time against the good Wittenberg front. I mean, that, that affects guys coming in. Third and ten, and here comes the blitz. Wells gets hit, gets the ball out, and it's complete down to the 40. A gain of seven. It'll be short of the first down, but Eaton pulls in the ball, gain of seven. And you got to think Hiram's going to go for it. They're not going to punt. Terriers have nothing no. to lose in this game. They come in 0-3. All they want to do is shock the world and beat Wabash on homecoming. And Coach Rayburn said he wanted to avoid a letdown this week. And here's the first real test for the Little Giant defense. Fourth down and three from Wabash 40-yard line. Wells with time. Now some pressure. Completes the ball to Eaton. Eaton with a first down to the 35. Oh, nice looking throw there. He throws it. He's got a lot of velocity behind the, behind the ball. Looks like kind of a tough ball to catch. The points down a little bit. You hear about that with quarterbacks. Some throw balls easy to catch, some tougher to catch. And uh, I see Jim's get has a sweatshirt now. Some extra socks. The whole deal. <laughs> Jim's supposed to have those about two now. hours ago, but <laughs> maybe we can toasty. thaw the ice in the veins. First down for Hiram. From Wabash 35 yard line, Wells cranks it up and another completion. Wells goes down courtesy of Tyler McCullen, but he found Eaton streaking across the field again. Another first down for the Terriers who have something going, Steve. Wells has a strong arm. He's sure not much for uh, laying it in her gently though. I mean, he, <laughs> he wings it. He does wing it. If you get a receiver so you can catch it, it's gonna get there in a hurry. And he's finding you know, a couple open guys here. All, from, all of a sudden he's five for eight. And, Completed his last three passes. Down to the Wabash 24-yard line. 
Terrific drive, quick screen out to Robinson. Robinson with room to run down to the 30 where he's met by a couple little giants. Pick up a number, may have been Evan Hansen. Well, Wabash defense doesn't have yet as a sack, had some, had some hurries, and then maybe even not hitting his arm once. But uh, I would expect we're going to get in there here pretty soon. Second and five. Terriers change everything up, and there will be a flag. Tyler McCullen came across the line and contacted the left tackle. It's tough because the, the way the offense the way the offense stands up and looks over at the signals like a lot of offenses do now because, you know, they signal to all 11 players from the side. The line was down, and then they stand up pretty quickly to look over at the signal. And McCollum touched. It's now, what a lineman can't do is put his hand on the ground and lift it back up. I think right. Coach Rayburn thinks he saw somebody do that. This Either way. This Hiram team averages just 11 points a game, but with a very impressive drive. Wells is going to sneak it ahead and get the first down. That's what I do, Steve, get behind the 300 with, pounders. Yeah. yeah Nothing I'd, wrong with that. I had no idea coming in that they'd be, they'd be that big on the screen. We were talking earlier, if you're just tuning in, and the size of – they, they go from 285 as the small guy to 325 as the big guy. That's the range of their offensive line. You get a good look at him, at him right there from the end zone. Great shot, guys. And the, the big guy's up front for Hiram. Jacob White Knight, a massive left tackle. The handoff is to Robinson, who goes off guard. And another impressive run. Gain of five for Robinson. Well, the one thing you don't want to do, uh, Jim, and we – probably tired of hearing me talk about this, but you don't want to give them some, some, some confidence and give them light. You know, this is a team that's never beaten Wabash and, and coming in on paper, they're huge underdogs. But you get them some glimmer of, of things and some hope and some, hey, we can do some things, it changes the game completely. So I think this drive right here is pretty important. Little Giants went up big on Hiram at their place. A year ago, see Robinson is met by a host of little giants, nothing there. Last year at Hiram, little giants won easily 41 to 10. They went up 14-0, then Hiram went down on an impressive drive, kicked a field goal to start the second quarter. And then Wabash reeled off 27 straight points to go 8-0 on the season. That was last year. This year, it's Wabash seven, Hiram zero, and it's now third down and five for the Terriers. Two men in the backfield, that's Eaton and Robinson. Eaton goes in motion to the far side of the field, and you know he's going to be looking at him, and he does. And that play was Brian Parks just totally missed it, Steve. Yeah, I think he's just short. I think we're going to look at a fourth and one here. Yeah. Brian Parks, on, no, it's not. I'm sorry, DeLon Pettiford in coverage. Okay. And Eaton came out of the backfield, and you tell you, Wells' eyes were fixed on him from the moment he got the ball, but Pettiford didn't, didn't make the play in quite enough time and the pickup is four. It'll be fourth down and one. Boy, Pettiford and Parks like two bookends, aren't they? They're tough yeah, they to are. tell apart up here. Plus one's number two, one's number five. You can't read the numbers. No. Gotta look at the shoes. All right, Wells and Robinson. It'll be Robinson. Robinson gets cut down by Ludwig and he's short. he's short. Little giant defense holds. That was big. Very impressive drive by the Terriers. Alec Wells in a rhythm. Eaton with three catches on the drive. I don't know what he's waiting and on. It's they had to get to the three. It sputters. So we are going to take a 30-second timeout. 2.21 to go first quarter. It's Wabash 7, Hiram 0. Defense stands tall, but the Little Giants looking at a 95 yards worth of real estate. And Mason Zurich picks up four, gets it out to about the nine. Well, I think what you do here, you get a big stop. 
Uh, you get a big stop on Hiram as you do. You go 95 yards, and you go all. You go actually pretty good into the second quarter to go up 14, 14 to nothing. If you want early success, that's what you do right here after getting that big fourth down stop because Hiram offense is feeling pretty good right now. All right, I want to say hello to some people in a moment, but first Mason Zurich, left side. Gains about four more. He'll be a yard short. It'll be third and a yard. Hello to the folks from Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church working the concession stand downstairs below us. Have us dialed in today. Fantastic. And, of course, somebody had to, Tyler had to send us the beautiful photo from San Diego. Little Giants, third down and one. Mason Zurich straight ahead. He's got first down yardage and more out to the 17-yard line. Mason finding some momentum for the Little Giants. Melissa Butler also watching. What's Melissa the temperature says, in Florida? Uh, <laughs> she says, do we want gray? No, we want blood. Regarding the uniforms, Wabash men will understand that reference. Big throw out to Drake Christian, who tiptoes out of bounds at the 29. That's Another one of those big, strong arm throws, Steve. That's a nice throw. I mean, you, you, you don't find a lot of smaller college quarterbacks who can make that throw so accurately in getting it out there. Under a minute, first quarter, Little Giants on top 7-0 with a fresh set of downs from their own 29-yard line. Rice with time, being spied, kicks it out. That's the tight end. Clay Fullencamp, and Fullencamp will have seven. Upended on the play. Complete to number 40, Clay Sue Fullencamp. Snyder from our athletics Tackle department. Here's a great four, Wabash story for us. She says she's watching from her office because one of her student workers is a queen contestant. She's helping him prepare for his grand entrance. <laughs> and those of you Wabash guys out there and others, we will be covering halftime festivities. Always interesting. Covering being the uh, <laughs> loose definition. <laughs> well. Mason Zurich tries to get first down yardage and gets cut down from behind. It's Burchett again, number Brush 36. Number 38, Mason Zurich. Leading tackler Tackled this football team came in today with Kyle 35, Burchett. and he's got at least three in this game. And that uh, means third down and five, and in comes Shamir Johnson. It's a big third down. Uh, like and I said, you know, Hiram didn't get any points quarter. on that drive, but Your they uh, had, a lot, had a lot going. Hiram Terriers. Mason no. Zurich comes out of the ball game. We've completed one quarter at Hollett Little Giant Stadium. It's Wabash 7, Today we Hiram 0, and you are listening to Wabash College Football on 91.3 WNDY Crawfordsville. And I pass out a few home homecoming awards here to outstanding class agents down on the field. So we have uh, Mark Shreve and Scott Metzger. Jacob Pachter, Mark Shreve, uh, picking up some outstanding class agent awards down on the uh, sideline. Society of Class Agents gathering today and Gordon Colson getting the uh, effectively the Lifetime Achievement Award. Really one of the great class agents. That's Gordon Colson you see there. Scott Metzger presenting him his award. He's class of 58 is Gordon. Gordon was alumni director here at the college for a long time. He and his wife Peggy. percent for the year tops any class all the way back to the mid 60s. Jacob and Mark stay in touch, and it shows. The Society of Wabash College Class Checking Agents is proud scores. to proclaim it's, Mark uh, Shreve and Jacob Angels. Pachter as this year's winners of the Myron G. Phillips Award. Mark and Jacob are some little giants. Gordon Colson, Class of 1958, is this year's recipient of the Warren Shearer Award for Class Agents. This award is the Society's Hall of Fame Award. Gordon has been a strong proponent of the class agent system since his days as our alumni director and a staunch supporter of the college for a long time. In fact, he and Peggy have been loyal donors to the college for over 37 years in a row. Gordon takes contact with his class very seriously and his efforts result in communications with his class virtually every quarter of the year. Gordon and Peggy can be seen often on campus where they remain very loyal supporters of all forms of Wabash athletics. 
On a personal level, Gordon has been a valuable source of knowledge and insight to the alumni staff. The Society of Wabash Class Agents is proud to proclaim Gordon Colson as this year's recipient of the Warren Shear Award. Gordon Colson, some little giant. All right, we start the second quarter. Shamir Johnson has checked into the game at running back on the third down and four. Connor Rice takes the snap, fires it out. Christian, first down yardage out to the 41. Knocked out of bounds by number six, Ronnie Jones. The, the offensive line did a great job there. You can see on, the, on certain passes they want to get the defensive hands down, so what they'll do is they'll set up the pass and then they'll cut the guy low uh, to get their hands down, to get him down. What it does, it makes it a really easy throw for the quarterback. And it's going to be a short, quick pass like that. You need to do that to get the ball. It was Wes Brown off. making the hit. Flares it out to Christian. Christian with some running room and good blocking by the wide receivers. Knocked out of bounds after a gain of almost 20. Strike that. It's about 16 on the game. Well, great blocks out there. Good catch, first of all. It wasn't the easiest catch in the world. We've talked about how that's a harder throw than, than it appears, but great blocking down downfield and really getting into these smaller defensive backs. Johnson fakes the handoff from Rice. Rice now rolling, directing traffic a little bit, wings it downfield, overthrows the intended receiver, Sammy Adams. Uh, wasn't a lot about that to like, Steve. No. He didn't look comfortable out of the pocket on that one. He felt, he looked like he felt like he needed either to get rid of it or run it right away. I think he could have hung a little bit more and maybe send somebody downfield. You don't want to throw it too late over the middle, but sometimes you'll see that and you'll see a, a receiver get behind the defense. And with his strong arm, he can throw it all over the field. Five receivers set. Nobody in the backfield except Connor Rice, the quarterback. Tries to draw Hiram off sides. Doesn't pull it off. Low snap. Full blitz coming. Rice wings it downfield. Has his man open. Got to be a flag. No flag. Nice play. Yeah, nice play by D.D. Fleet and had an arm on the shoulder of Sammy Adams. That's one where we wish we had the uh, replay. Yeah, and I think it uh, it may have looked worse than it was. He may not have grabbed his shoulder until right as soon as the right ball as the past. ball. <laughs> <laughs> right Jim's the ball not, arrived. Jim's not buying it. Jim just demonstrated on my shoulder what, what, what happened out there. But it was a nice, you know what I liked about that was, was Connor's touch uh, on the throw. Light because rain beginning to fall. That. Light rain here yep. at the stadium. The blitz pretty effective that time. Forced Connor to get rid of the ball a little faster than he wanted to. A lot of time this time. And ball goes right through the hands of Matthew Dickerson, Jr. Well, ran the same play again, same play we ran before, and that was bringing Dickerson underneath. It's just that the play before, Connor decided to throw it deep, and I think they saw Matt was open. Uh, it's just a route where Dickerson goes down a few yards and comes straight in underneath the linebackers, and, you know, got to catch that one. So Derek Fox on for the second time to punt the football. At 38-yarder the first time out. Well, we need him to, to punt well. He didn't, didn't punt really well last weekend. Uh, a tall wobbler and yeah. Satchel Burton made a special teams mistake a week ago and made another one there. It was a fair catch, and he lit the guy up. So, well, Hiram will have good field position 15 yards from the 10. Did he signal fair, fair catch? Apparently. If he signaled fair catch, then we got a 15-yarder. Uh, that's what uh, the officials are discussing. If he didn't, it's kick catching interference a little different. Officials discussing the play. Yep, kick you catching can. interference. It's going to be kick 15. Kick catch interference. Kick on the kicking team. That's a 15-yard penalty from the end of the yards, kick. Yep. First Automatic down first down. Yard line and yep. After an impressive opening game drive, the Little Giant offense has not been able to put much together. Alec Wells, the quarterback of the Hiram Terriers. Officials swapping out the footballs. 
This is a count them, five wide receiver set. Got three on a tree. Just uh, got four to the top of the top of the formation. And kicks it out to Eaton. And Eaton gets upended right at the first down marker. Gain of 10 on first down. Well, what are they having? They're not running the ball on us. They're not throwing the ball down the field. They're having some success on getting the ball to their skilled players, which are pretty quick from what we've seen, but making the easy play. What that does, too, is it slows up our defensive line, Jim, because, you know, we're not going to get a chance to get a big sack because he's getting rid of the ball so quickly. Wells now with pressure, fires it out again to Nate Eaton, and Eaton gets a gain of two. Gobbled up on the play. Wells slow to get up. Tackled by L.V. Bowden. Oh, Bowden, you're right. Again, I can't see the numbers. 46, L.V. had a nice game last week. Well, not only, you know, we're, we're quick up front. I mean, there's an example right there where LV is chasing down the quarterback and hits him right when he's getting rid of it. Also some backside pressure coming that Wells felt. Gain of a yard on the completion to Eaton. He's got six catches already in the first half. This time Robinson's got a ton of room to run. Cuts it back, and it'll be Eddie Schmale making the tackle, but not before a gain of 21 or more. Well, another, another little mini drive going by, by Hiram. You know, you don't want this to be one of those games where you just wait for us to, to start piling it on and you never get to pile anything. Next thing you know, you, you're in a tough game. Robinson cut down immediately. Number 49, Connor Carnes had a big week last week, and we have uh, Hiram player down now. It's number 64, Jonathan Murphy, freshman from Dalton, Ohio. That's the big boy, 6'1", 200, and I'm sorry, that's 325. The big, that's the big boy? No, that is one of the big boys. Well, he's the biggest of the big boys. 325. So the uh, training staff looking at the injured player. A few more people watching, actually several more people watching. Michael Warren watching from Ohio. Caleb Smith, local kid, watching from Knoxville, where he's going to college. Uh, James Miller, class of 80, from Zionsville. He says it's raining heavily in Zionsville, and it's heading east to west today, so put on your rain slicker. I got a little rain. You can see the umbrella starting to come out here on homecoming. I have not looked at the radar yet. I don't want to. Connecticut, Tom Werby, watching, said great looking broadcast coming in strong Bruce Newby in Guadalajara Mexico our first international response today the National Association of Dana Coulter from New Albany watching Paul Blair from New York state of New York asks about the pet band the pet band is here and strong today Paul you might not be able to hear it uh, maybe on our broadcast but they're going strong today. And this, this Hiram team hosted DePaul last week and lost 45 to seven. That same DePaul team is now winning at Kenyon, 31 to nine. DePaul's looking really good, Steve, here early in the season, three and zero, and steamrolling opponents way out in front of Kenya today in Gambier, Ohio. They are. They are. Next, next week's going to be a, a good one from Greencastle. It's Old Gold Week down at uh, Greencastle next week, and it'll be Tiger on Tiger, Wittenberg at DePaul one week from today. But we are back in action here at Hollett Little Giant Stadium as we see the training staff help Jonathan Murphy off the field. He'll be replaced by someone just as big, Aaron Rataj, 270-pounder. Tom Klingeman's watching from Michigan, says the weather is just like it is here. Carter Adams, Noah Anderson. Kurt Lightcap in Chicago, great football player in his time. Back in action, second and 10 for the Terriers, driving as rain begins to fall. Handoff is to Robinson, and he's hit immediately by Connor Ludwig. Came flying up, popped him right at the line of scrimmage for no gain. So it'll be third and long for the Terriers. 
Nick Negavetic. Nick Negavetic watching from San Antonio. Dustin Hendricks checking us out, and Scott Biederman. Well, aside from the 19-yard scamper by Robinson earlier in this drive, he's not managed to get much going. His other seven carries have netted a total of seven yards. This time, it'll be Wells all alone in a four-wide receiver set with an extra blocker in. And unabated is McCullen, but he gets the ball out incomplete. It'll be fourth and nine. McCullen forced uh, the pass a little faster than he wanted. Oh, thank you, Steve. Yeah, for this uplifting radar I just pulled up on my phone, looks like we've got some heavier rain heading Inter our way. Interesting it's that not even, Dean of Students, here Mike yet. Raiders, has decided to join us in the booth. Yeah, it's nice of Mike to come up and see us at this juncture of the game. Has nothing to do with nothing the rain. Nothing to do with Dean the rain. Said. Okay. Mm -hmm. Drake Christian stands at his 10. Dorso. High, wobbly, off the side of the foot kind of uh, thing, and that's going to be about a 12-yard punt by the time they get that. it marked. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to be that far. Keep walking, keep walking, inside 10 yards. keep walking. 14-yard yep. punt. All right, you win the game. You said 12, I said 10. See Coach oh. Olmstead there in your photo with the short sleeves. Omi Olmstead, tough guy. Olmi is the offensive line coach for the Little Giants. Good well, Shamir Johnson time. in the game. The training staff continues to work on the right ankle of Mason Zurich. Shamir had a big week last week, scored twice. Career highs for rushes, yards, and touchdowns, and he'll take it off the right side. Has some running room if he can cut it up. Lowers his shoulder, picks up four. Wow, was there some good blocking in front of him, cutting those guys down. We had two, I think one was one of our receivers. I'm sorry, we're having a harder time to see with this rain. It's hitting the glass in front of us. And one was a pulling lineman, but both cut nice and low, which you can do in college, not high school, legally. Tight, tight end Clay Fullencamp out there on the block. Give him a little love. Johnson again, same play, right side, first down, gain of eight. Good run for Johnson. Really one of the better runs of the game so far. Zurich had a 10-yarder early, but that's a big first down run for. Really need to get something going. I mean, we, we just, you know, we're sitting in a 7 to nothing lead, and uh, like I said, the longer you keep a team like this hanging in there. Rice whips it out to Christian yet again, and he gets wrestled to the ground right just this side of the marker. So it'll be... About a yard away from the first down, maybe a foot, actually. Connor kind of throwing the ball well today. Really enjoying his uh, pass-catching partner, Drake Christian, with six catches already in the first half. This will be Johnson straight up the gut, and that'll be a first down. Gain of two. Well, Connor's 11 for 15 on today. Six of those 11 completions to Drake Christian, as you seven. said. Seven. Seven yeah. to Drake Chris. Seven of the 11 to Drake. That's a huge quarter and a third. 10.25 to play first half, 7-0 Wabash. Rain beginning to fall a little heavier. The crowd, uh, some of them bailing, but most of them hanging in. I think they want to watch the Queens. 47-yard line of Hiram. Rice rolling near side, wings it out to the tight end, and the catch is good at the 40. It'll be a gain of seven. Full in, or Sammy Adams, rather. Sammy Adams. Looks like a tight end and actually not. A, they love the great uniforms, but I tell you, it's hard to get a number on them. All I saw was the zero. I thought it was full in camp, but it was Sammy. Yeah. Sammy's about as big as most uh, teams' tight ends, 6'3", 2 and a quarter. Johnson, left side, finds a block. First down yardage and more down to the 35. Nice rhythm. Shamir Johnson on the carry. For the offense. Good enough I like for it. another some Wabash some College. Ryan and uh, Connor still making some good decisions. Throwing the ball. First down, Little Giants from the Hiram 35. Rain falling pretty steadily now. Shamir, left side, lots of room to run. 30, 25, 20 down the sideline. Shamir will be. Out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds at the 18. Well, I didn't see that. I thought he was right down yeah. the line. 
Yep. They stepped right out. Correction. No touchdown on the play. <laughs> Uh, Everybody was fooled. Even the PA. Of course, well, everybody boos. The Hiram uh, defenders thought uh, he was yeah. down the sideline. Well, and you know what he should have been? He should have kept his feet, and he could have slowed up a little bit, and he saw what he had and given himself a little bit more room. It's easy to save him up here. but Shamir with first down. Little Giants down to the 17. Connor. Rice with some time. Looking, looking, yeah, looking, had, doesn't like anything he's got and wings it away. He had, um, Dickerson. I think, somebody up top earlier. Was that Dickerson early up top? Yeah, Dickerson early, and then Dickerson came across the back of the end zone. And, and then uh, I don't like where he threw it at the end. Late across the middle into nothing. That's I don't like that at all. Run the ball, but don't throw it late across the middle like that. It hangs up too long. Too many things can happen. Shamir with 34 yards on five carries. That last one went for 17. Hard for us to see at this juncture. But we can see that that's Shamir Johnson. Can't say enough about the junior from Andrean High School. Stepped up last week when Zurich went down and is called into action again today. Hernandez. Well, the rain isn't letting up. So they put up uh, some plexiglass right in front of us to basically shield the broadcast position from the noise of the speakers above and the crowd below. But it's now like it's iced over with uh, rainwater on it. So it's uh, hard for us to get much of a view. We're gonna I'm not sure it's iced over. It is well, chilly But it today. gives us that look. It does. All right, Rice has time, has an open receiver. Drake Christian touchdown, Little Giants. 13-yard touchdown pass. Connor Rice to Drake Christian. That is Drake's first touchdown catch of the year. His eighth catch of this ball game. And Andrew Tutsi will come out to attempt the extra point. Sphinx Club guys pretty excited. That was a good drive. As they should be. Derek Fox with the hold. Snap a little behind him, but Tutsi punches it through, and the Little Giants go on top 14 to 0 with 8.13 to play here in the first half at Hollett Little Giants Stadium. And the Little Giants out in front now by 14. Yeah, the wind actually bringing some of the rain into our table a little bit. This field, as you know, it will be a little bit here is uh, okay, more on your side. Yeah. But we're facing, if you look straight out from the press box, we're facing to the north and east. So typically everything's behind us. We've never, I don't remember any time, any of these years, Jim doing these broadcasts where the, the rain has been hitting the glass because it's always coming from behind us. So kind of a new, new adventure for us today. See Jim's trying to be the human windshield wiper. He's doing the re reaching around and trying to get rid of some of the water. Dean of Students Mike Raiders is still, we're fortunate to have him up here. Ricky Hampton and Christian Maynard are deep for the Terriers, standing at their five. Tutsi to kick it off. Crowd's starting to thin a little bit now. It is raining it's pretty, hard. pretty hard. And it's cold. It's been a long time since we've had rain out of homecoming here at Wabash. Tutsi. Ball in the air, pretty good kick. I think that's Hampton, and it is from the five. He's got good wheels, gets it out to the 30 and beyond, cuts it back into the middle of the field or up the sideline, and he's tackled by Tutsi, was one of the tacklers, gets it out to the 38-yard line. Good return of 33 yards for Hampton. I took my headsets off there just for a little bit, Jim, and you can really hear it raining. It's raining a lot harder than I than I uh, first uh, was aware. The yard line so we see Philip Merritt, who helps us out on game day, IT services guru, coming up with a roll of paper towels. Danny Robinson with the handoff, runs into a tackler and then cuts it back and picks up a yard or two before he's tackled by DeLon Pettiford. Tackle made by number five, DeLon Pettiford.
Little Giants with 13 first downs in this ball game, 199 total yards. Hiram, six first downs and second and seven for the Terriers, 101 yards. Second down and about seven. Wells out of the pistol with Robinson behind him. No, it's not Wells. Strike that. It is Robinson on the carry, and he's gobbled up for a loss of about two. Sorry about that. I didn't see that Randy Tucker, the freshman from Twinsburg, Ohio, checked in at quarterback. Not sure what's happened to Wells. I don't see him getting work done on the far side, far sideline. Randy Tucker, the new quarterback, freshman from Twinsburg, Ohio, two of four on the year with an interception and 18 yards of passing. And now a timeout will be called by the Terriers. We'll just keep it right here. Coach Stu Johnson is watching from Texas. Bruce and Karen Bradway watching from Iowa. It says it's nice in Iowa. It looks cold here. It is cold. It's 50 and rainy and windy on this October 3rd, which is unusual. Dick Peterson from California watching, 80 degrees, Irvine, California. Rem Johnson. Hi, Rem. Big watching cookie. as always. He said, it's hard to believe Raiders would take refuge in the booth. Right. I remember him as a stud. <laughs> Great Mike one. Is, Mike is still here. And Mike is still here. I'll have to share your email when he walks back this way, Rem. You're exactly right. We have established that this is not uh, CBS Sports or ESPN, and I'm going to uh, be really Bush League and ask the folks from Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church, if they're listening in the concession stand, that two large coffees would be greatly appreciated at halftime on the roof of the press box. You haven't heard Troy Aikman or John Gruden make that request on the You know, I, uh, I don't think they have to. I think they just turn around and it's behind <laughs> them. Snap. All right, third down and nine for the Terriers. It is Tucker at quarterback. Little Giants bring in the house. Now pressure by Clark. Ball is tipped. And out of bounds, it'll be incomplete, and the Terriers will have to punt. Well, they had a one-person route over here. There's just nowhere for Number nine, Alec no, Wells' pass play. intended for number Tim three, Morrison Nate Eaton, it. broken up by number five, DeLon Pettiford. will bring on the punt team. All right, Drake Christian is back to accept the punt. Zach Durso is the punter. Unleashed a huge one. First time, and this is a high snap. He's going to get it away, but it'll be a terrible kick. End over end and backward, and it'll go out of bounds right at midfield. So that's going to be a punt of about 13 or 14 yards. Second bad punt in a row. 11. He's had an 11 yarder and a 14 yarder. You remember his first one of the game going from our 60. right to left was a boom. 60 yarder? Yep. Yeah. So he's averaging, his average might be okay. So his last one was 13, and this one's going to be right marked right at midfield. So, Well, it doesn't feel it, Jim, but there's still six minutes to go, and Wabash has piled up 199 yards offense, almost 200 yards offense with half of the first quarter still to play, or second quarter still to play. Just doesn't have that feel to it. Hiram has 99 yards, just under 100. Wabash just under 200. Rain has lightened appreciably. Handoff is to Zurich, who's back into the game, following his blockers, stiff arms for a gain of eight. Looking like the Mason Zurich we've all come to know and love. Well, he scoots, and he scoots pretty quickly, quicker than he looks. Shamir Johnson took that last drive, ran five times for 39 yards before Rice connected with Christian on the 13-yard touchdown pass. That was an eight-yard gain for Zurich. Stands next to Connor Rice. And he'll take it again. Left side again. Lowers his shoulder. Gets the first down and a gain of three. Well, on a different down and distance, he may have cut up there. I don't know if he just wanted to get the first down. Looked like he could have cut up and get a few more yards out. We'd keep running this, uh, this kind of counter play. We're pulling the 
the guard and getting them out in front. It's kind of a one-back counter. Start one way and come back. First down and 10 from the Hiram 39. Fakes the handoff to Zurich. Zurich stays in to block, and it's going deep for Christian. And just running stride for stride was Tevin Weaver. Beautiful coverage on the play. Well, what Wabash did there just had max coverage. What I mean by that is you had, you had eight people protecting Connor, who's throwing to one of two receivers. We had a receiver up this sideline, and we had Dickerson up the top sideline. And, you know, Connor takes his pick and throws it up. I like to call on first down, you know, because even though it was incomplete, it spreads out the defense. Hand off to Zurich, right side with blockers out in front. Steps through to the 34-yard line. Gain of five. It'll be third down and short five. Had a pretty good success running the perimeter. Last couple drives, mixing in the passes. It's a tough passing day right now. It's, it's pretty breezy. DePaul having no trouble with Kenyon, up 38 to nine. Wittenberg over Worcester, 10-0. A little surprising score there. Dennison beating Wesleyan, 10 to three. And uh, Wittenberg's score is just, you know, almost the end of the third quarter. Rice is just gonna keep it and slips and falls a yard short of the first down. It'll be fourth and a yard at the 30. I think he was trying to decide what to do there. Do I run and go forward for the first time, or do I slide, as I'm sure he is coached to do? So a little giant offense stays on the field. It's too wet, too windy to try a field goal of that distance, and too and he, far, frankly. And again, you know, I mean, uh, Need something to happen here on fourth down. Mason Zurich outside, dragging tacklers to the 18-yard line. A gain of 12 for Zurich. You actually see that happen some on fourth and short. You see kind of big runs out of it because the defense is doing everything they can to, to get everyone close to the ball. And if you can break through the first line, it's a lot of times there's a, uh, there's a lot of room, and Zurich's the one to do it. So again, a big time-consuming drive here, Jim, and like to get seven out of it, go into the more of a comfortable halftime lead. Zurich, full head of steam, long way to run. He ran a long ways ran there for 30 yards to get what? For five. Five or six? Yeah. But I just don't see what Hiram's gonna be able to do, Jim, to stop our, our running game the way we're starting to kick it in. Now, our, I mean, on the ground, we're over 113 yards rushing. On this drive with 3.42 to go in the second quarter. Wabash with 231 yards total offense now to Hiram's 99. So second down and short five. Zurich with the ball straight up the gut. Breaks one tackle, gets it to the eight. Should have the first down. Burchett and Weaver on the tackle. Looking in at this Wittenberg, Ohio Wesleyan game, Steve, surprisingly close game. Of course, we don't know what the weather's like there. It might be terrible because Wittenberg has 11 first downs and Worcester six. Jenkins has only thrown for 123 in that game. So there must be some weather going on in Ohio. Although not slowing DePaul down, it doesn't look like. Yeah, Wittenberg was only 225 yards at the end of the third quarter. First down for the Little Giants at the eight. That's Zurich. Good play by number 55, Anthony Pesh. 250 pound senior from Hubbard, Ohio, sliced in and brought uh, Zurich down after a gain of two. You got me looking into this Wittenberg Worcester game now, just kind of curious. Not a lot of fumbles, it's only one interception each side. It's just. Looks like defensive battle. I bet, is got some, I bet they've got some rain going there. The hurricane that has dumped so much water on the southeast. Oh, Rice runs right into traffic, wings it, done, the ball is dropped. That was a great pass. 
over across his body by Rice to Dickerson, and Dickerson just couldn't hold on. A little slippery down there today. Well, yeah. with the gloves they wear, have a hard time using that as an excuse. And if it is a little wet, you got to learn. I mean, receivers off time learn to catch those in their body. I mean, at some point, you just you can't get in your hand. All right, third down, a goal from the six. Rice with some time, now scrambling. He's going to have to just throw it away, and he does. Not sure what well, that pass play was, but Connor was rolling to the near side of the field, and there was not a single gray jersey to be spotted on this side of the field. Right. There was no play to be had, and Tutsi now will be on to attempt about a 23-yard field goal. Now, once Connor got out here, he made the right decision. There was, just, oh, there was sure. no one to go sure. to. 23-yard field goal on a slick field. Snap is good. The hold is good. And Tutsi punches it through and gets roughed up. Well, and I think it'll be a first down for the little Giants. The, yep, they're uh, going to get coaches are not very happy with Ross Anderson. It's going to be an automatic first down. He's going to call a roughing. He was claiming he was blocked into the kicker, but they're not buying it. Tutsi put the ball through, but the offense will come back out, and the little Giants will have new life. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, number 10. That's half the distance to the goal. Automatic first it. down. Thought it looked like Ross Anderson. Yeah, yeah. wow. What a, See uh, both those guys, they, they look like bookends. What a break there. It's a good call. I mean, you have to call that. You're, you're protecting a vulnerable guy in a vulnerable position. But they could have called it what I think Hiram's upset about. They could have called a running into the kicker, which is five. But when you come low and hit the leg like that, you're, it's going to be roughing. That band sounds great on a cold, wet day. Nice to have them in the house. Sounds great on a warm, humid day. First down and goal at the three-yard line after the penalty. It's been a pretty clean game so far. Rice keeps, dives over the end zone line, and it's a touchdown Good. for Connor Rice. Connor got popped right at the goal line and tumbled in his second touchdown run of the game and the Little Giants on top by 20 with 2.09 to play here in the first half. Homecoming in Crawfordsville. The rain appears to have stopped, but it's going to keep swirling and we'll have more before this game is over. Tutsi now, not appreciably different, bigger distance than his Last field goal try, and he punches that right through. And with 2.09 to play, first half, Little Giants on top, 21-0. to zero. Another effective drive for the Little Giants on a fairly short field. Only went 50 yards on the play, on the drive, rather, after the miserable punt. Good look at the Sphinx Club there and the stripes and uh, the Zirk. students who are still hanging around right there down in front. Mason Zirk looked great on that drive, Steve. Now has 84 yards on 18 carries. He did, and, and you got to give credit to a lot of that with the guys up front are really doing a good job blocking on the perimeter on both the receivers and our line, our pulling linemen. Really doing a good job getting guys off their feet, making it easy for somebody like Mason Zurich to get some yards out of it. We'll talk a little bit about Mason Zurich. And found himself in the emergency room while the Little Giants were in the third quarter of the game with uh, Wittenberg a week ago. Had... Uh, Elevated heart rate. They couldn't get his heart rate down. And he was dehydrated. They took him out to the hospital for tests and was dropped off about 10 minutes after the game. Coach Rayburn said he didn't even know he was gone. Knew he wasn't able to play, but he thought it was a shoulder injury. And in fact, it was a heart rate issue. But he got cleared to play. Well, he was cleared that night, sent home, and practiced about half the week. So good to have Mason Zurich back and running hard on that drive. Tutsi's kick high. It'll be Maynard at the 12 over the shoulder. Maynard's got a blocker and a hole, and he's dragged down at the 29-yard line. Nice tackle there by Connor Lenahan. I think was one of the tacklers. So we don't want to give up 
any point. Two minutes and three seconds to go, and the 70 yards, just over 70 yards for having to go to to score. You know, you definitely want to go in with a 21 and nothing lead and not give any hope to the. Steve, I don't know if you can see over there and see if Alec Wells is still suited up on the sideline. This is the second series for the backup, Tucker, Randy Tucker, the freshman. Hard to tell whether uh, Wells was hurt or just pulled out of the game, but certainly was not ineffective. Was not ineffective. Wells with 9 of 13 for 70 yards. No, I, I, I can't imagine. We remember he did have that play where he got up a little slow, holding his right shoulder, which would be a throwing shoulder. Yeah, that would be my that'd be my guess. As we have a timeout called by by Wabash, actually wanting to get the ball back. I like yeah. that call, Jim. Yeah, that's aggressive. I like it too. You know, and people say well, it was twenty-one to nothing, but anything goes in the first half. Well, and if you if, if you've got a punt, mm -hmm. the last two snaps to the punter have not been good. Last one right. was high, resulted in a thirteen to fourteen yard right. kick. Actually, I'm not going to speculate on what the length of that was. It wasn't very far, that's for sure. Uh, we had the the well, last so one was 11. 11. So we had, we, he had a 14 60, and 11. 60, 13, and 11. <laughs> 60, and it's a tough day to punt. I, it is. You know, especially on oh, that, hey, when it was a bad not, snap. Not as easy as it looks. Phil, we're watching. Ah, oh, Jim and Jane Davlin watching from uh, Motown, Detroit. Nice having you on campus this week, Jim. Appreciate uh, you coming down and teaching a class. Jim's a member of the class of 1985 and a member of the Board of Trustees. Tucker, second and nine. And a jailbreak break blitz. How do you not block either guy, Connor Carnes or oh. Tyler McCullough? They both came free. Well, that's interesting. That's our first sack of the day. Uh, a, a team that had seven sacks last week, and like we say every week, Jim, I mean, uh, defense coordinator at B.J. Hammer just finds a way to get pressure on people. That's a big sack there going into the, in the half, especially when we're trying to get the ball back. There's still a good minute and 48 seconds left since Wabash is using these That's timeouts. third and 15. Little I like it still have one more timeout, so if they can stop the Terriers here, they'll get the ball back with probably a minute and a half, and... Uh, even a great punt, they're going to have decent field position. Wittenberg now up 17 to nothing. We've been talking about that Worcester game. Get a little bit more uh, breathing room as they just went into the fourth quarter. DePaul still pouring it on Kenyon, although Kenyon gave up scored. another score. 38 to 16 now. DePaul over Kenyon in the fourth. Rain blanketing the Midwest. Denison is over Ohio Wesleyan 10 to 3. Denison is having an undefeated so far this year. And that one is at the end of the third, so that's a good game. And Allegheny and Oberlin is the only game, other game, NCAC game we haven't mentioned, and that's a 3 p.m. start. So they're just now kicking off. That is at Oberlin. All right, three wide receivers to the far side of the field, an extra blocker in. Tucker rolling left and runs right into Tyler McCullen. Tyler just lit him up. Nowhere to go with that pass. And the Little Giants will get the ball back. They have called timeout. 1.45 to go in wow. the half. And we will see Durso to punt again. Oh, Tyler McCullen. Yeah, you know, we talked about not having sacks on the day. Last two plays, one was a sack, and one was just, I'm in your face. You better get rid of the yeah, ball. Yeah, that was not a sack, but that wow. was a very painful reminder of the speed and athleticism of Wabash's defensive front. Durso. Little Giants are bringing everybody. Oh, A.J. almost got it. A.J. Clark almost got it. Better punt. And it'll be down about the 42-yard line, 41. They're going to let it go all the way to the 41. And the well, clock will be stopped at 132. Little Giants have no timeouts. But a good opportunity to try that uh, two-minute offense. And that short kick almost coming down and hitting DeLon. Which can happen on a short kick. You try to get you guys out of the way. What happens is you have your punt returner yell a, a word and then point to where the ball is coming down. And as the guys are blocking, they can see him. They hear it. They look at him to see where it's coming down. And just get out of the way of that. Hiram drove inside the Wabash five-yard line, got stopped on fourth down. And since then, it's been all little giants, 14 zip. And a really much more dominant performance. Matt Dickerson caught and steps out of bounds, gain of five. 
Maybe four. So what? No, maybe three. Not, to get not a lot to do with that. No, can't do that down the field, but nope. That's, that's what they gave us. So minute 28 left. Wabash trying to get some more points on the board before halftime, up 21 to nothing. Second and seven, Rice with time, lots of it. Dumps it out to Johnson. Johnson's going to cut it back inside. Not a great move necessarily. Probably should have sprinted for the sideline to stop the clock. 115 now. And again, I saw uh, Garrity, I think it was, coming across the middle. Looked like he was open, but Connor hasn't made that pass much today. This time he's looking right at Garrity, and it goes right through the wickets. Fourth down. Yeah, you got to make that throw and catch. Well, who'd have thunk? And now, you know, now Wabash. 30-second drive for the Little Giants. With a tough, tough decision. Yeah. Three straight passes. One of them was out of bounds, stopped the clock, and then the next one, the time the clock kept running. And then an incomplete pass. Nothing. All right, Derek Fox. Nate Eaton is dangerous. He's the guy standing back to receive the punt if he gets a chance, and he won't. That ball will just be down at about the 24, come out to the 25. I know the coach 52 is, seconds. In that situation, would like to let it bounce. He just let yeah. it because of the time. Right. They might get a few more yards out of it, but you let it go, 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 go until the official blows it dead. You can see Coach Denham there giving some signals to his very popular line. coach. Very much. Defensive line coach. So Randy Tucker's just going to take a knee and head to the locker room and get warmer and drier. And there he does. And he'll have to do that one more time. UW Platteville, number 14 in the country. Early lead over Wisconsin Whitewater, actually, 7-0. And actually, that's not uh, that early. It did just, that's through one and a half quarters. Platteville over Whitewater. That would be a, uh, be, that'd be an upset. So 28 seconds to go. They'll have to take an E one more time. And the freshman quarterback, Tucker, will do that. And that'll do it for the first half of football. So we've played uh, 30 minutes. Little Giants on top, 21 to zero over Hiram on WNDY 91.3 Crawfordsville and Wabash.edu slash live. We'll be back to holler at Little Giant Stadium to talk to Coach Rayburn after this 60 second timeout. Here with head coach Eric Rayburn. Coach, 21 nothing at halftime. Thoughts on your first half? Yeah, we, we played well. Uh, got to keep uh, uh, playing well in the second half. Can make a couple adjustments here at uh, halftime. And, uh, but, uh, you know, all in all, I thought a uh, pretty good performance for the first half. Defense looked really strong again. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we, you know, uh, you know, we had a couple drives there where we, we made some mental mistakes and gave some first downs. But, uh, you know, other than that, they're, they're doing well against the run. and, and uh, it has got to do a better job of uh, on the quick passing game, uh, uh, stopping our rush and getting our hands up and breaking on the football. Coach, thanks. Good luck in the second thanks, half. Thanks. Jim, Steve, it's time for homecoming. Everybody's lining up, ready to go. Back up to you guys. 
Clayton. Thank you, Clayton Randolph, and thank you for uh, weathering the storm of the first half. It's 21-0 Wabash. A nice shot of Hollett Little Giant Stadium. First half statistics, Connor Rice was 15 of 24 for 123 yards, a touchdown. He ran for two touchdowns. Drake Christian, his favorite receiver, eight uh, receptions, 75 yards, and a 13-yard touchdown reception. Tom Garrity has, a, has one catch for 15. Matt Dickerson, two for 10. Sammy Adams, Kyle Fullencamp, Clay Fullencamp, sorry about that, Mason Zurich, and Shamir Johnson each have a reception. Mason Zurich leading the ground game with 84 yards on 18 carries. Shamir Johnson with 39 yards on five carries. For Hiram, Alec Wells started and uh, hit nine of 13 passes for 70 yards. And then uh, backup came in. Randy Tucker, the freshman quarterback out of Twinsburg, Ohio, came in and he was 0 for 2 passing and got sacked. Leading receiver for the Terriers caught six passes, and that's Nate Eaton. Six receptions for 38 yards. Robinson, talented little running back, carried 11 times for 28 yards, caught two passes for 26, including a 22-yarder, best play of the game for the Terriers. Randy Tucker, the quarterback for the Terriers. Little Giants went on top on the first drive of the game. They went uh, 10 plays and 65 yards in three and a half minutes. Connor Rice ran it in from five yards out, and Andrew Tutsi made the extra point, put Little Giants up 7-0. And then the game stagnated for a very long time. Halfway through the second quarter, Little Giants marched 69 yards on nine plays. Christian caught the 13-yard pass from Connor Rice. It was 14-0 after the Tutsi extra point. And then just before halftime, 2.09 to play, Connor Rice capped a 12-play 50-yard drive with a short three-yard run, kind of did a little somersault going into the end zone, and Tutsi's kick made it 21-0. Tyler McCullen with six tackles and a sack uh, to lead the way for the Little Giants. Evan Han Hansen, the freshman, has four. Connor Ludwig with four hits, and Evan Rudder with three. Facing the Terriers on the defensive side, Kyle Burchett, we knew he was good coming in, had 35 tackles to through the first three games, had eight in the first half of this game. Tevin Weaver with six, and Ronnie Jones with four. Danny, Ronnie Jones with four, I guess. And then uh, D.D. Fleeton with four as well. well. I think we've got time to take another 30-second break. If uh, Adam Phipps is uh, ready to do that, we've got 30 seconds before we start homecoming action. We'll be back at the Hollet after this short timeout. 21-0, Little Giants. All right, halftime is underway. We see the Theta Delta Chi. And following the Theta Delts, we have the Pi Delts. Delta Chi's queen and banner. Okay, that's enough of that. Yeah, some of these I just don't. Maybe I'm getting too old, Steve. Phi Delta Theta, the next group to come in. And uh, uh, keeping the tradition, Phi Delts don't do a queen. Seriously, fight out. Putting pups in their place. Oh, that's a pretty good one. Who is All this? Right. Who, that is the, is? Um, who did they say that was, guys? Sigma Chi, I think. And after the Kappa Six, we have the B. Oh, that, oh is, that, that is Kappa that Sigma. Kappa that's Sigma. a good-looking banner. I like that. I'm not commenting on the queen. All right. We do not comment on queens in this program. Phi Gamma Delta. Big old banner they coming in the, from the uh, Phi Gams. They won the decoration contest and prior to this were leading homecoming competition. Animal control. Oh, look at that. They've got Allegheny. They've got the Hamden Sydney Tigers. they got the Wittenberg Tigers. Love that. Okay. Uh, if we get a shot of that banner, guys, from up high, the Fiji banner, pretty good looking. Yeah, of course Jim wants to get a closer shot of the Fiji banner. Well, it's the best one we've seen. <laughs> Give me a break, and I don't want to see that. It is 
Like, no, like we don't want to see the that. Banner, the banner, fellas. The banner, Ivan. Ben. All right. Yep. Well, we're not going to apparently look at the uh, animal control banner. The Independence uh, bringing up a couch I, I know I've seen in Martindale before. I will give you the Fiji banner, Jim, on that one. You said it's the best banner we've seen. I would agree with that. Anything other than seeing the queen right now. Uh, the independent queen. We independent just queen look at can. Them uh, All right, what's next? And just Beta Theta Pi. Tame the Terriers. Well, I think the little giants are taking care of business there, Steve. Taming the Terriers. All right, you get the. Uh, that queen contraption is just fraught with an accident. Yeah, we're standing next to Dina Student's Mike Raiders, who's been holding his breath now for two minutes and 47 seconds. Probably the all week, actually. Of the queen competition thus far. Yeah, that what what yeah, could what possibly I, go wrong? Yeah, what, what uh, on what Sandy on Let's what get are you a shot of the beta queen just for a second? Hey, guys. I know. Why don't you wear these smooth soled shoes and stand in this wet two by four as we carry you across? All right, Teak with a good looking banner. Very good looking banner. Nice job. The terrier isn't a barrier. No, he isn't. Not today. Pet band having terrier a good time isn't with it a as well. Barrier. I assume that's. Clever just because it rhymes. I don't see any other connection, but do they have two queens? They do. That's a nice Wally on there on the teak, teak banner. That yeah, is. They got some uh, artists in the teak house. It's like the old school Wally. And yeah. the Not the old old school with the little guy with his arms out, but the Phi Kappa Psi. Phi Kappa Psi, known for the 25 foot tall banners, little shorter this year, and we're grateful for that. Well, they they usually don't have the engineering. They usually tip over to get to get that done. I do like the check uh, out, check I do out like the, the final collar. on the dog. That's I great. It. I love it. Bow wow, boo hoo. Live ever, die never. Nice job. Bow wow, boo hoo. Size. All right, I'm with you. But now, do not. Literally, she's taking. Oh, I thought she was taking the candy out of her chest. I was gonna say, don't eat Jim that. Jim Amadon. <laughs> We said we can't see very well up here. <laughs> Doing play-by-play -play of homecoming at Wabash is never a really good uh, idea. That's not bad. There's not a Terrorize the Terrors isn't like a bad that. banner. It's I've never looking. seen a Wally that looks like that, but everything else is good. Do we know who that is? Is that Lambda Con? Nice tame queen. Who is that? Can't see. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay. It was, I just said and nice tame queen, and then they got a... No, this is Lambda Kai. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, we don't need any twerking in this halftime show. It's a family program. Where is Miley Ray Cyrus when you need her? Is that it? Yes, I think Last we are uh, mercifully. Dean Raiders, uh, that, was, uh, that, was, that was tame. That was all right. Well done. I can remember years that were... Not even close to being tame, and so you've done a good job of reining that back in, in all seriousness. Platteville well, still on, on top of Kids. Whitewater, for those who care. May not be very many people right now watching the Queen competition. So that'll do it for the homecoming competition. We'll get the results probably around the start of the third quarter. They can see us high atop our broadcast position. You can't really appreciate uh, if how we look cold, it is. We, <laughs> we are cold. <laughs> but the wind has uh, died down considerably. It was blowing when this game started up here, and the rain has actually helped calm the wind down a little bit. And, and it looks like the rain is just about done, if it's not already done. But it did dampen the halftime crowd. Usually, homecoming halftime crowds, people just don't leave. It's usually pretty full. And now that the queen contest is over and the banner contest. People are finding warmer places to go. I think those queens will be finding warmer places to go. So we had uh, homecoming results before those two events. Hey, we got some people watching. Tim Morrison down in Tennessee. Good to know you're watching. Kurt and Tony Shuttle watching in Lansing, Illinois. Mike Swift and Terry Swift watching from Panama City. Panama City. 
Wish I was there. No, I don't really, because uh, homecoming at Wabash is really special, and this has been a great homecoming weekend. Briefly talk about some of the people who were honored this morning at the homecoming alumni chapel. Honored this morning at the homecoming alumni chapel were two outstanding Wabash women, Betty Allen, wife of Bob Allen, honorary class of 1957, and Professor Kay Widows, Professor of Economics, inter, uh, John H. Schrader Interdisciplinary Chair in Economics. Kay Widows becoming a member, honorary member of the class of 2007. So we welcome those two Fans, fine sure Wabash women into the ranks throw. of Wabash so, alumni. Oh, we've already gone over the stats, but there you can see it was, uh, aside from one drive, one very good Hiram drive that stalled inside the five-yard line, it really was all Wabash. Little Giants with 251 yards. Connor Rice, pretty effective, threw a lot of balls away, had a couple drops. A couple go right through the wickets, but the first down, dominant, 17-6, to and pretty good first half for the Little Giants, Steve. When you see the uh, the completion percentage for Hiram's pretty good, uh, nine for fifteen. They they when they had success, they had some success throwing the short routes, getting them out to some of their uh, their uh, fast guys. Uh, they had a big screen play that was part of that. So uh, they they had one quality drive that they got no points out of, which really was was a killer for them. Uh, but you know it's a long drive. Other than that, they've been able to do nothing offensively. The Wabash defense, as they as they have all year. Uh, has just has just been dominant, you know, holding anyone under 100 yards well, for a half. Is, let's is let, a let's nice let's half. talk about that drive. Hiram yes. went 14 plays and 65 yards, held the ball for almost six minutes. The drive stalled at the Wabash four. Right. So they had 65 yards on that one drive, and they've only got 92 in the contest. So that gives you a sense of how the little giant defense decided to buckle things up. As they find a way to do. So also honored at homecoming today, the Alumni Award of Merit winners, the Jeremy Wright Young Alumnus Award was given to Ryan Vaughn and our thoughts and prayers are with Ryan and his family this weekend. Ryan was unable to be with us. Uh, Ryan's grandfather died earlier this week and the funeral was scheduled for today, but our thoughts and prayers with Ryan and his family. Ryan is the uh, president of the Indiana Sports Corp. Big time position after uh, serving as chief of staff for Indianapolis Mayor Greg Ballard and president of the Indiana, Indianapolis Marion County City County Council. So a nice honor, uh, outstanding young alumnus, Ryan Vaughn. Earning Alumni Awards of Merit, Dr. Stephen Jay. He uh, founded the Fairbanks School of Public Health at Indiana University and uh, really one of the champions of tobacco prevention and smoking cessation in the state of Indiana, a real public health pioneer. Dr. Stephen Jay received the Urbasca Civic Service Award for his career in making Indiana's air uh, smoke-free or at least less smoky, and we appreciate his efforts there. Bill Cook earned uh, an Alumni Award of Merit. Professor Bill Cook, an esteemed professor of classics and history and all things medieval, at uh, State University of New York, Geneseo, taught a couple of years here at the college in his retirement and has led Wabash Immersion Learning Trips to Italy and Africa, Kenya. So Bill Cook receiving the Alumni Award of Merit for his outstanding contributions to higher education. We're proud of him. And the final Alumni Award of Merit winner was John C. Schrader of Evansville, Wabash class of 1969, a great philanthropist, a big admissions person. He's been on the board of trustees at Wabash since 1992. He chairs the admissions and marketing committee. He's been incredibly generous with his time and his talents. Operates uh, plastics companies in Evansville and he is uh, all things Wabash admissions in Southwest Indiana. So congratulations to John C. Schrader, Professor Bill Cook, Ryan Vaughn, and Dr. Stephen Jay, all receiving alumni awards of merit today at Homecoming Chapel. So we wish them all kinds of congratulations and sorry that uh, the rain has dampened their homecoming festivities. It's always terrific to be in the chapel on homecoming and uh, see the families and old friends back. Today we saw 
Former Wabash president Andy Ford and his wife Ann back at the college for homecoming here to pay tribute to, among others, Betty and Betty Allen. They were close to Bob and Betty. And we saw Joe Barnett at homecoming chapel. Joe, uh, longtime chairman of the Wabash Board of Trustees, class of 1961. Joe uh, suffered a stroke a couple of years ago and hasn't been back to campus, so it was great to see Joe and Charlene on campus along with Jim and Susie coming. They all came over together. National Association of Wabash Men Board of Directors met through the weekend, as did the uh, Wabash Society of Class Agents and the advisory committees of the college's Liberal Arts Plus initiative. So we had people in for the Global Health Initiative, the Wabash Democracy and Public Discourse Initiative, and the Center for Innovation, Business, and Entrepreneurship. So we had well over 100, probably closer to 120 alumni volunteers back for a leadership weekend and we are grateful to everybody who took the time to come back and help push this college forward and uh, Beverly Cunningham of the president's office for doing so much to spearhead all of those activities so lots of thanks and congratulations going out today well it was a great ceremony Jim you, I know you just ran through all those awards and it's just you know every year you get you get the titans of of Wabash history and of philanthropy and admissions and helping with our career services and it's just an uplifting thing to go to and to see these folks get honored. And it's interesting because very few of them who ever get honored want to be up there. You know, they feel good about being honored, but they're almost embarrassed to be singled out because they know there are a lot of Wabash men and, and others in the Wabash community doing good, and good work. And they're, they're, they're very modest. Well, John Schrader, one of the most humble men I've ever known in my life and has done so much for this college over his lifetime, Long family tradition. His father, John H. Schrader, an alumnus, and John's son, Scott, an alumnus. All John and Scott on campus today. It was great to see them. So we have a minute and a half before the start of our uh, third quarter of play. We're going to take a 30-second timeout. Adam, if you're uh, ready to go down there, we'll take a 30-second we'll take 30-second timeout. Come back. Back at Hylet Little Giant Stadium, where Wabash leads 21 to zero. Getting ready to start second half here. Well, we'll find out the results of the homecoming spirit competition, which began Thursday with Chapel Sing, won by Theta Delta Chi. And includes chants and banners and queens and all kinds of things. So the teams are huddling on the sideline as we get ready to start the second half. The Little Giants will kick to the Terriers, see what kind of adjustments got made on both sides. See if I can convince my broadcast partner to get back in the broadcast. Hi, Jim. I'm here. <laughs> nice. They haven't kicked off yet for the second half. I was actually running over some ideas of a trivia question. We, with we heard Raiders. them all. We heard them all. When you leave your microphone on, we can hear the whole conversation. <laughs> Just want to point that out. <laughs> all right. Well, I won't use that one then because everybody knows the answer. Andrew Tutsi and the Little Giant kickoff squad. Not a great first half. Ricky Hampton with a 33-yard return. Kick coverage needs a little be a little bit tighter. I'm sure uh, the coaches reminded the uh, special teams unit at halftime. Where's A.J. Clark? Kick it his way. A.J. leads the team with six special teams tackles. 
on the season. Takes special pride in blowing up the kickoff return man. And he may get a chance this time. That's Maynard. Maynard's got some running room, but he's brought down by A.J. Clark. That was fun. That's A.J.'s seventh kickoff cover, kickoff uh, tackle this year. And the Wabash defense is out. I believe Alec Wells is back at quarterback. Can't quite get a bead on his number, but it does look like an eight, so we think it's Alec Wells back. And he hands off to Robinson, and Robinson is corralled and dropped, and I think it might, might have been Evan Hansen, and it was. The freshman makes the tackle, and it is Alec Wells back out at quarterback. Alec, nine of 13 for 70 yards in the first half. Gain of a yard for Robinson, second and nine. Connor Ludwig moving around, drops back in pass coverage, and the ball is loose! So Wells got sacked by Evan Hansen. I think it's Hansen. Well, they yep. called that a fumble, a little surprise. I thought his arm was coming forward, but. That'll be a sack and a fumble. First time Wells has been sacked, second sack in the ball game. But I'm seven yards away looking through a rain-soaked piece of plastic. Loss of five. They said that uh, was Ludwig, not Hanson. I'm not sure the guys in the press box can see any better than we can. Look like Hanson, but. Again, these jerseys are hard to read from any distance. 36 and 30 look pretty similar. Wells now, McCullen. He fires out the screen pass, but overthrows Robinson. Tyler McCullen bringing the heat along with Ethan Burrish. Well, a nice play by Tyler. I still can't see number. Whoever was covering the screen pass. Oh, because, yeah, sure, sure. Oh, Ethan. He was he was rushing and then read the screen, got to sneak Backed out. Because if he's not there, nobody's out there. be hard to throw over Tyler McCullen. And then you have that. span of about seven feet. Yeah, even a screen pass is tough when you're getting pressure like that. Dorso had a rough first half, but that is a beautiful kick. And it drives Christian back to his 24-yard line, and there's nowhere to go. No, nowhere to go on that one. That That'll happen on a long punt, too. 46-yard yeah. punt, no return. Dennison's still up on Ohio Wesleyan, 10 to three. That at the end of the third, so we got a good game on there. Wittenberg finally you. said we're tired of this being close, and they scored 14 in the fourth to for a final score of 24 to nothing. I will tell you, I will tell you the uh, Dennison's defense is real deal. Dennison's now not a lot of great opposition there yet, but the defense is nationally ranked in about four categories. So the Wabash offense on for the first time in the second half, and it'll be Mason Zurich all over again. Goes left side. Makes one man miss and bulldozes his way out to the 30-yard line. That'll be a gain of six. Well, that's that same play we ran at the end of the first half, had so much success with, with pulling the backside guard, getting him out in front of Mason. And that's one of those plays there. You know, Mason looks like it was an average play. We got six yards out of it. It's a sign of a good line when you can, you can get yards that don't look hard to get. Next thing you know, you're getting six, seven yards a pop. Same play. Mason hoping is... Hoping Stucker will get out there and move somebody. I'm sorry, it was Tim Leith. Tim Leith was the pulling guard, and Mason got to the hole before he did, and Mason was pushing Leith forward through the hole. Not a very big gain, but a got gain of about three. Somebody limping off the to the side there. Looks like 76. Trey Taylor. Trey Taylor. Trey Taylor got a little dinged on the play. We'll be third and one for the Little Giants. Zurich up the gut. Easy first down run, a gain of about four. Yeah, and I'm guessing Coach Rayburn will be running the ball until we want to mix it up a little bit with the pass, is my guess. With, you know, an easiest way for a team to get back in the game is a tip pass and a pick six or something like that. So uh, keep it on the ground, get the clock running. 
grind it out when we can. Fortunately, the rain has stopped. He's got an open man. He had Sammy Adams open, didn't see him. And Rice will just duck under. Sorry, it was not Sammy open. It was Matthew Dickerson who kind of did a little underneath route and was wide open, but Connor didn't see him. We'll keep an eye on that Denison, Ohio Wesleyan score. Denison is our opponent in week eight, I believe. Is that correct? Two games before the Bell game. And then Ohio Wesleyan is before the Bell game. It's one of the two. Denison and Ohio Wesleyan are in the two Saturdays before the Mono Bell game. I just don't remember which is what. Oh. So we've discovered a leak in the roof of the press box. Right, right down, down the back, back here. <laughs> yeah. Long throw for Connor Rice. Completes to Drake Christian. Drake with his ninth catch. Gain of about seven. We're in the second half now, Jim. We now have uh, just Platteville, number 14, Platteville 10, number one, Whitewater 7. 10 to 7 in the third now, that game, involving the number one team in the country. Christian now with nine receptions, but just 69 yards. Hasn't been able to shake one. A lot of long passes for short gains. Rice with time, steps up in the pocket, fires it to Christian who drops it. Yeah, you got to catch it. Nice we've throw. Been, we've been seeing that just about every week. Rice really slings the ball, especially down the middle of the field. He really cranks it up. Drake Christian was very nice disappointed ball. in himself. That was a beautiful pass. Would have gone for a first down, a gain of about 15. And Drake uh, having a big day. Nine catches. Fox's ball away. Eaton's going to step away from it, and the Little Giants will down it at the 24. Get a little excited to down that punt down there. No reason to be in a hurry there. 33-yard punt. So we're going to hear about the Queen. Swings club moving. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to hear about the banners yep. first. Yep. Second place, Faisai. And the winner of the banner contest in the 2015 Phi homecoming Delta. competition is Fiji. Well, you ruined the suspense for everybody, Jim. And that wasn't hard to pick Bunch up. of artists in the Fiji house. No, that was easy. That was a great Collins. banner. It was a good banner. Alec yeah. Wells' pass falls That's incomplete, intended for number four, Danny Robinson, bringing on second and ten. Had the Gators. Yep. Said the Terriers were up next. Yep. So Wells' pass to Robinson goes off the fingertips, and it'll be second and ten. Well, they only been two targets for the most part. Eaton and Robinson. Tate has one reception, Keeley Tate. Robinson now goes in in the slot. He's going to stay in and block. And <laughs> Connor Carnes, we, Connor Carnes was in there so fast. We get guys coming free, as, and there's just there, there's no nothing, be, nobody between them. Connor Carnes was free. one of the most impressive defensive performances we've seen in a long time last week against Wittenberg. Twelve tackles, in on three sacks. He was everywhere. And then he hit the quarterback another three times after the ball got away. I mean, he was literally all over the field last week. Very impressive. When you know they're a big line. I mean, this is not the type of defensive line you want to face when you're you're, you're big guys like that. I mean, we're, we're, we're so fast. All right, Wells looking. Oh, Delon Pettiford almost picks it off. Ah, they baited that one. Ah. I tell you, the little Delon. Giants set that one up. Wells thought he had something, and DeLon was just sitting there waiting. Trey Taylor being worked on on the sideline by the training staff. Hopefully nothing serious. He's got both his shoes off. Durso had a big punt last time, and he's standing at his own nine. Decent snap, and he boots it away, and it's another butte. Christian this time will wisely call fair catch over his shoulder at the 35. Well, Dean Raiders has convinced me that there is no leak in the press box roof, but somehow water went down my back, so. <laughs> Again, you don't hear uh, 
this hard-hitting commentary from Gruden and Aiken on, on the broadcast. Well, I don't know where that drip came from, John. Gentlemen, I've been cold for like three <laughs> hours. That's all I got to say. Now, Man up is to Zurich, and he's got running room left side. Lowers his shoulder, dives to the 48-yard line. Beautiful run for 13-yard gain, Mason Zurich. <laughs> Dickerson just drives his guy out of bounds, and, you know, some people say he's holding, but it's not holding if the guy's not spinning and trying to get away from you. Yet another 100-yard gain for Mason Zurich, who's got big running room up the middle again. Give him 10 more. Going to be just short, second and, and one. Zurich has gone over 100 yards for the eighth time in his career. Give him nine on that. And now Shamir Johnson, and he will get enough for the first down and nothing more. So Mason Zurich checks out. After getting to 119 yards on 23 carries, his 800-yard game of his career. You know, hearing the pet band down here, I hope you can hear it on the broadcast a little bit. It's hard to imagine we've had a year or two without him. Or three or four, actually. Or three or four. I mean, it sounds so natural here. Shamir Johnson has a big hole, holds on to the ball. Tackle on the play by Ronnie Jones, the free safety, but a first down. Still 10 to seven, Platteville over Whitewater. Nice shot of Shamir the there, fellas. You see how he's really bulked up in the last year and a half, the Andrean product. Big upper body on him. He's not a big guy, but he's become a lot more powerful. He's always been explosive and a nice contrast to Zurich's bulldozing style. Rice has got a lot of time, but nobody open. And he finally just throws it away. I tell you, these defensive backs, our guys cannot, the little giant receivers cannot break free. I mean, there were two guys running stride for stride with Drake Christian, and there was not a We prayer. haven't been able to do that yet this year. You're right. To really get separation from people downfield. Well, you knew these uh, the defensive backs aren't very big. Torres, number 10, is... 180 pound, 5'10", 180 pounder from Cor Cape Coral, Florida. The other corner is Tevin Weaver, who's really good. Number seven, 5'11", 190 pounder from Garfield Heights, Ohio. This time Rice finds Christian, and Christian gets lit up and holds on, spinning to the 18 and getting pushed ahead by Burrish. Down to the 17, 21-yard gain. I'm just glad that he didn't get hit as solidly as he could have. When it I saw that like ball, he was going to get popped. When I saw that ball in the air and that kid coming, you know, I want to say something about that because the rules changes in football have really made a difference. That is a perfect play, and I see it over and over in a good way because three years ago, that kid coming in would have come in high. He'd come in shoulders and above and to make the big launching and to make the big hit, and that's where kids were getting hurt. And so football has been really smart at pulling back on that. Shamir Johnson up the gut and a holding penalty on the Little Giants. The yep, Anthony Pesh was the defensive lineman who got thrown to the turf. It's too bad because Shamir had a, well, maybe not so bad, I guess Shamir's hole was because. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot, repeat first down. of the defensive lineman. Number 91 just checked in. For the Terriers, ten yard Tavon penalty. Tavon Bates, freshman, yep. two hundred seventy pounder. Ten yards from the previous spot in college. It's a big penalty. Well, you just got to pull out your first and twenty big playbook. Penalty. Yeah, not a big deal. Iron brought in a couple of bigger players in the middle of the field to try to slow down the Wabash running game, and Rice gets hit, floats it out looking for Christian. And again, he had Dickerson open. You know, we've thrown him. a lot of balls to the, toward the sideline, Jim. A lot of balls to the sideline. We haven't thrown much across the middle or deep. So second and 20. All right, Rice, second and 20. Hand off to Shamir Johnson, cuts it back inside and gets 
knocked to the turf after a gain of maybe a yard. It'll be third and 19. Zade Maben made the tackle. We have not called his name very often today. He's a 5'11", 250-pound junior from Lehigh Acres, Florida. So if I Gamma Delta wins the band. Big Queen afternoon for the Fijis. Uh, yeah, probably wrap up the homecoming spirit competition for the Fijis. I think that's two years in a row, maybe, Mike Raiders? Yeah. All right, third and a long way. Rice zings it out to Dickerson. He holds on, gets knocked out of bounds after a short gain. Uh, and I guess you try the long field goal here. It's probably not a bad move to give your kicker an opportunity to attempt a long field goal on a wet track. Well, we haven't, you know, haven't put any points on the board this, this half. This is just a 34-yarder, so, but given the conditions with the wind and the rain. It's an NFL, NFL PAT. Yeah, exactly. Fox handles the snap. Tutsi gets it away. It looks good, and it is. Andrew Tutsi from 34 yards. He's perfect on the day. And the Little Giants lead 24-0 with 6.22 to play, third quarter action. That could have been from 50 yards. He got into that one. Nice drive for the Little Giants. Good mix of pass and run. Bogged down because of the holding penalty. But to get some points on the board is... And Zurich now with 120 yards rushing. Shamir's 45. Connor having a good day, continued. 18 for 30. Yeah, 10 of those going to Christian, day. who's got 102 yeah. on, the, on the day. Over 100 yards receiving. That's, that's something for a receiver to ever get over 100 yards in a game. Well, in this offense. Especially with that, that, that player who, you know, most of his, his catches right, are right. pretty short. Christian has not been able to get separation down the field today. That's just the speed of the corners and the safeties for Hiram. And Hiram's going to flip things up. Hampton comes low and Maynard goes high. And Tutsi gets a nice kick, and it'll be Hampton from his eight. Oh, little Giants had three men hit him and all missed him, but eventually he's brought down at the 27. So the Terriers will come out on offense, and it will be Alec Wells at quarterback again. No, it's Randy Tucker. Just as quickly as I said that, it is Tucker who's come out. Tucker's a freshman from Twinsburg, Ohio, 5'10 and 2'10. Ron Bean watching from California. Allison Cothy checking us out. So we've seen this formation a few times. Eaton lined up in the backfield, and then he kind of flares out for a screen. There he goes. Oh, handoff went the wrong way. Tucker's got nowhere to go. Welcome to Connor Carnes. So Tucker kept the ball, and Robinson went the wrong way. The hand, or maybe Tucker spun the wrong way on the handoff. He was forced to eat it, and Connor Carnes was on top of him as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage. He lost a yard. Second and 11, 540 and counting, third quarter action. Rain has begun again. Eaton with the catch, beats Pettiford, but right there to clean it up is Austin Brown. Gain is out to the 34, so it'll be third down and about three. That's Tucker's first completion, now one for three. Trey, Trey Taylor's day is over. His foot, his ankle is wrapped up in ice, and he's going to be carted to the locker room, probably go get some x-rays. Tough way to end homecoming for uh, the big end, the senior. Hello, Chip Timmons, Coach Hutchison. <laughs> okay, timeout. Hiram, they didn't like what they saw, and they'll use a timeout. Umbrella's popping up again. 
few hundred Hardy fans hanging out. We have a uh, first trivia question of the year, Jim, comes from our guest up here. Mike Raiders is still up here, still claiming it has nothing to do with the rain. The fact that he's up here. He wants to get a bird's eye view of the homecoming festivities as the dean of students. First trivia question is there are two teams we have played every year, I believe, for the last ten approximately. And there's a reason why I'm saying it that way. Where they have nicknames that do not end in an S. Two teams we play every year, or close to every year, that do not end in an S. So you can give me an email, hoffmans at wabash.edu, if you think you know the answer. No internet peaking. Gentleman's rule applies. No, I'm, I'm not giving that hit yet, Dean Raiders. All right, third down and a few. Tucker rolling, throwing, pass is tipped, and it is picked off, little Giants. And Hiram says they got it back. Well, they weren't blowing the whistle. So well, it will okay. be Wabash's ball at the 43. Not sure why they weren't That's killing. That's they call it down. I think well, it was they, Austin Brown. They got to kill that earlier. Who had the pick. It's got to be Wabash ball. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the wing guy's are already up here. Saying we're going to have it on the 42-yard line, ball basketball. I think it was Austin Brown who came away with it. I'm not positive. Brett Harris, good luck. It might have been Eddie Schmell. Fourth progress to stop. It will be Wabash ball, first and ten. Yeah, I don't know. All right, Brent, you get to tell us who, who intercepted it because we don't know. So the little giant offense will have the ball first and 10, 439 to play third quarter at the 42 yard line. Zurich back in the game, stays in to block. Ball goes right through the hands of Sammy Adams and that's four drops in this game. Surprise we Put the ball in the air there. We do have a winner of our trivia contest already, and it's interesting because the answer uh, Tim Nick, Grusenmeyer Nicky. gave okay. are different than the answers I had. He actually added another one. There are actually three. Well, there's Oberlin Yeoman. That was one of his, and the other one he said is, is Big Red, Dennison Big, Big Red, Red. Yep. which Yeoman I hadn't thought about. There's another one on our schedule every year, but it's 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 Zurich. Our Piles his way to a first down, give him 15 more. It was L.V. Bowden on the interception. L.V. Bowden on that last drive, folks, with his first career interception. Sorry I missed that. I can't see the gray jerseys. The rain's begun again, and it was a mob scene as soon as the uh, interception was made. Three people guessed Oberlin, four people actually. Mark Savias also got them both right, so he's a co-winner along with Tim Grusenmeyer. Shout out to Nikki Hudson and her dad listening to the game. Zurich goes right side and has four more. The other one I was thinking about, Jim, is our every year scrimmage opponent, Wheaton, the Wheaton Thunder. Oh, that's right. They used to be the Crusaders. Used to be the Crusaders. Right? Yeah. Now they are I would the not Thunder. have come up with Thunder. So thanks to, uh, we might, they must have offended some Crusaders. Well, we used to scrimmage know. the big blue of Milliken. Good call. So thanks to Dean Raiders for that guest trivia question. We'll come up with another one here. The beginning of the fourth quarter. Gain of four for Zurich on first down. Now second down. And Rice is going to try to throw it again. He overthrows his man. Assuming it was Sammy he was trying to reach. Coach Hoffman says hand off the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah Mason Zurich with 137 yards. I'd get it to him about another 10 times. Well, and, and, you know, you want to run your offense. We're still in the third quarter. You want your guys to run the offense, what we how, what we normally do. You don't want to get out of that too quickly because you have to prepare. So, another pass. Connor Rice to the right side here. Inbounds and then out of bounds, but it's a catch. Going to bring up a fourth down. 
Our thanks to um, the beautiful Chris Amidon for bringing coffee to the roof of the press box. Thank and her, you. And her little helper. Hi, Maggie. Thank you. So it is like the CBS broadcasting booth, Jim. Yeah, catering in the shop. Catering coming our way. Ben Kramer's up here. And Ivan's up here. They're just trying to stay warm. Zurich on fourth down. Gets the first down. Steve, that play looked like it was doomed. But somehow. Mason finds a way to go forward, Jim, and uh, he sure did on that one. Get the outside. Big Absolutely. First down, Little Giants. Mason Zurich straight ahead. He'll get down near the 10. But I'll tell you what, you can't see on, on the, uh, but it's, a, it's about as miserable as it's been. The rain has picked up a little bit more, more of a dr drizzle, but it is, the wind is picking up, blowing right into our face up here. If it looks wet and chilly out there, it's because it is. You can see the Hiram guys there, probably a few cold guys over there, probably ready to get back on the bus. It's just so unusual for an early October game to be this cold and wet. Typically, Wabash homecomings are sunny and beautiful. Zurich, right side. Gets upended after a game. Number eight, Mason nice Zurich on the carry. Tackle made by number 36, Kyle Burgett. Burgett yeah. Well, success that Hiram's had on, on tackling Zurich on those on the edge, just coming in at him low and tripping him up with his feed because you're not going to just, you know, you're not going to come up high on Mason and get anything done. Sorry about that. Microphone off for a little bit. They're down in two now. Love the pet band. Zurich with a tight end right in front of him, and it will be Zurich left side, and he's going to rumble for a touchdown. Mason Zurich from seven yards out, and he puts the little Giants on top by 30. That'll give you an appreciation of the conditions. Look how rain covered the uh, camera lenses are. The guys are trying to keep them dry. They've got trash bags over them. And can't say enough about the guys with our media center. One of them's sitting down in the end zone, just getting blown on and rained on. And our sideline cameraman doing a great job down in the elements. Yep. We see you down there in the end zone, sitting down there in the rain. We appreciate it. Tutsi's kick is good. So the wind is blowing, the rain is falling, temperatures are dropping, and the little giants are rolling. 31-0 over Hiram. Minute five seconds, one minute, five seconds to go. Third quarter action. You're listening to Wabash Football on WNDY 91.3 Crawfordsville and Wabash.edu slash live. Thanks for joining us from all over the country, indeed around the world. The Wabash Nation represents had a nice crowd here today before the rain really picked up early in the second quarter and things got pretty miserable and I think the fans uh, headed for warmer, drier places. But there's a hearty group of a few hundred left, including the pep band. Pep band by staying Jim strong. Swift. You know, the camera guys, you guys are doing a great job again today. I'm just, I'm always amazed and I talk about this all the time about we have students coming out. This isn't their background. This isn't their area of study. Just do a great job. We get some great shots. And we blow away the productions at, at uh, other places because of our camera angles. It's not us. It's because of our camera angles and replays and graphics. So just No a replays today. We apologize production. about no replays today. But just the fact that we're able to do what we do with the uh, Media Center gang, we're grateful and appreciative. So a high kick will be taken by... Number 20, new player on the return game. That's Luther Fortson. Fortson gets nice return out to the 38-yard line. Nice shot of the Wabash faithful trying to stay warm on the sideline. 
late November game here at the Hollet. Oh, I'm sorry. First weekend in October. Danny Robinson is just, wow, plowed under two yards behind the line. Hard to tell who was there. It looked like Tyler McCullen. Evan Hansen also in on it. Loss of two. Hiram in no real hurry, but they will have to run one more play before the third quarter comes to an end. We'll take a little break in the third quarter. Tucker out of the shotgun. And he throws it right into the ground. He was trying to find Eaton, but Eaton was well covered. And it'll be third and 12. Our plastic in front of us, our protector, Jim, is getting tough to see again. Have to look around the outside of it. Well, our good thoughts are with Trey Taylor, who left the game with an ankle injury. Hope for the best, and he's able to return to the team swiftly. Big pressure on Tucker Ball is tipped and caught by Eaton. First down. Can't draw it up any better than that, Jim Amadon. I will take my hat off to Nate Eaton for staying with that one. Nate's been impressive. That's his eighth catch. And by far his longest. And that will do it. We've played three quarters from Byron P. Hall at Little Giant Stadium. It's Wabash 31, Hiram 0. We'll be back after this short timeout. End zone, low slash. <laughs> View of a rainy day in Crawfordsville, but spirits are high. It's been homecoming week. Kicked off with Chapel Sing on Thursday. We start the fourth quarter with Hiram driving. Tucker hands it off to Robinson, and Robinson gets chased down from behind. Evan Rudder in on the hit, along with Evan Hansen, maybe. Rudder was in on it, but also Hansen, who comes up limping a little. Coach is really impressed with the freshman out of Garen Catholic. Yes, they are. Talked about him right at the beginning of the season. The coaches did. Didn't surprise him much. They knew he was a good player. No gain, second and 10. Terrible snap in, Tucker's just gonna have to dive on it. Well, we've got a flag down at the line of scrimmage. I and mean, I don't know if they, blew, they were blowing it dead or they let it go. If they let it go, it's probably encroachment. If they blew it dead, it's probably false start. False start, number four on the offense, five yard penalty. Repeat second down. That's very fortunate okay. for Hiram. It'll be a five-yard mark off instead of about a 14, 13, 14 yard loss. Robinson having a chat with the official, but some kind of confusion in the uh, communication there between center and quarterback. And now the Terriers have the play in second down and 15. Low snap, handoff to Robinson, who's got a hole. 
but is dragged down. Nice play by Hansen. Man, he did have a hole. It felt like more of a play than it was. It ended up being about a six-yard gain, but it felt like more than that. That shows you how good our defense is, Jim. You see a play like that, and you're like, that's a pretty good run, and it ends up being six yards. Yeah, Robinson, 14 carries, 34 yards. There's been some tough sledding today for him. Tucker under pressure by McCullen. McCullen's going to hit him, and he throws it away. Tyler McCullen is hurt. I'm guessing he got a – I'm not going to guess. I tell you what, he uh, he was very athletic on that play, Jim, because the quarterback was moving, trying to get away from him, cut both ways, and Tyler stayed with him. The idea was – a little fireworks there were, Jim? I don't know. Wabash training staff out helping Tyler McCullen off the field, and he says, I don't need any help. I'm running off. And with the look on uh, DeLon Pettiford's face <laughs> there, I think we all concerned. know what happened to uh, <laughs> Tyler McCullen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I wondered if he got a heel somewhere. As he was chasing, you see that sometimes as someone's running away from you. So quick uh, change here. After the incomplete pass, it's fourth down and nine. And on comes the punter. I think this is Durso still. He's had, had two really bad punts and two or three really good punts, and this one will be down deep, 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 deep at the three-yard line. Yeah. So Connor Rice is going to come back out, Steve. I was wondering whether or not we might see Michael Putko. Yeah, I was too. Here's a Wabash trivia for you, Jim, and others who are still out there staying with us. Question is, Wabash's first collegiate baseball game. Oh, I know the answer to this. <laughs> oh, you do? You don't know what I'm going to ask. doesn't matter. <laughs> Actually, it's the first intercollegiate athletic contest. It yep. was a baseball game. Oh, yeah, it was 1866. We played Asbury and beat him. Were you going to do a trivia question about that, Steve? That I'm was so my sorry. trivia question. So it's sorry. not my trivia comment. I said okay. trivia question. So sorry. All right. All right, so we'll move on beyond that. When we beat Asbury in 1866, any idea what the score was, Jim? Yeah, give, like me, give me a guess. 35-32 maybe? No, you just saw it. I'm no, like, I didn't. That's you get just it right. what I know. I used to it's be the sports information director, right? So right. that's a good point. 1866, we beat Asbury, which became later became DePaul. 45-32. to 32. I'm sure the baseball nice. rules weren't quite as the same as they are now. That would have been a long baseball game. Steve, there's a football game going on. Shamir Johnson just ran for about five. Shamir did, and uh, we have viewers out there who are also watching. And I, did, I promised them a trivia question. Yeah, I know. I might let you actually get one in, too. All right. Shamir again, <laughs> holding on to the ball tightly as he goes through the middle of the line, and he has the ball out near the first down and has enough. So that's a gain of six, maybe seven. Nice work there by the junior running back. Live stats a little slow here. We're going to try to boot things up again. First down, little Giants. <coughs> me. Shamir Johnson runs right into a tackler. A tight end. And, uh, what's that? Dylan Burrish? Dylan Burrish let his man go just a little early in 97. Gobbled up Tim Hinton McCoy. Gobbled up Johnson. He got no yards. No, Mason Zurich's day may be done. 29 carries, a buck 56 and a touchdown. Fakes the handoff to Johnson. He's got his man. And Drake Christian holds on for the first down out to the 26-yard line. That's a nice-looking throw right there, Jim. In 1904, DePaul, this is a trivia question, Jim. DePaul had a football game scheduled with Wabash on Thanksgiving Day, actually. DePaul canceled the game. My question is, why did DePaul cancel the game in 1904? Do you on want me to answer that question? That's Day. so easy. 
Well. Shamir Johnson, left side, shirt tackle drags him down. Gain of only a couple. That's easy for us because we've been around and heard these things, but it's probably easy for the Gusemeyers and Savaioses and those people of the world. What was the year again, 1897? No, 1904. 1904, yeah. There's a Thanksgiving Day football game. Yep. DePaul canceled two days before the game. I think it had to do with the a young man named William. Why? Maybe. Shamir tries to get outside, gets a little bit of an in your way, in the way block by Drake Christian, and look at him go. Looked like he never ever had it in full gear. He was almost tiptoeing the whole time. He didn't, did he? Yeah. There's a flag down at the 40. I'm gonna guess that. Well, I didn't see a face mask. I don't know what it would have been. It was right at the end of the run, right? Yeah. It's 29 yard run if it stands. Even if it's a block Wabash in the back players, or, or no, something. No, the Wabash players are pointing. Okay. It's against Hiram. And so even if it is, it'd still mask. be a first down for us. It was either a late Must hit or a face, face mask. mask. They're talking, but it's a 29-yard run for Shamir Johnson, who, who, again, never looked like you really had the foot on the conduct, sideline interference with contact on Hiram's bench. The 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Can you explain that one to me, Mr. Official? What did he say? I couldn't hear what he said. It was on Hiram's bench. Oh. Yeah, sideline oh, well, interference. If there must have been a there must if, have been a warning that we didn't hear because typically there's a warning. Well, not if not Good if contact. you run into somebody. <laughs> there if, you go. In the white, if you run into a coach, it's automatic. It's a safety thing. There's have been officials and coaches seriously hurt from contact. Division I programs have what they call get-back coaches whose job it is to keep people back off the line of scrimmage. And that was that play was going nowhere. That was D.D. Fleeton beat his man, the left tackle, Wes Brown, and Fleeton got in and knocked Johnson for a loss of a yard or so. Do you have any takers on your question? I do. Uh, we have two people still watching, Mark Zavallos and Rem Johnson both still watching. And uh, both get it right. It's because Wabash had a black football player. William De Cantrell. DePaul's quarterback said they canceled it on the grounds that it would strain the relations between the students of the schools. Ooh, what a catch! Wow, that's a nice Sammy catch. Dropped Sammy dropped one earlier, but, man, he went up high. To Sammy the making the rice pass. second catch of the day, and that was quite a catch. On a wet day, still drizzling here, folks. Hot shower in order tonight for everybody out on the sideline, for sure. Still the starters, man. I can't, I can't imagine they would come in after this series. But Shamir Johnson up to 87 yards in the contest. It's third and four now. And now a timeout. This is the Little Giants timeout. It's 31 zip Wabash, and it literally has been all Wabash today. Hiram had a terrific 65 yard drive that got inside the Wabash five yard line and stalled on fourth down. Little giant defense came up, made a big play. And since then, it's literally been all Wabash. Connor Rice, 184 yards passing and a touchdown. He's run for two touchdowns. Mason Zurich's rolled for 156 yards and a touchdown. The defense, defense has been very effective. So Hiram has passed for 98 yards and rushed for 20. Interesting fact, I'm, uh, I'm looking for the uh, good, another good trivia question. In 1929, Wabash and Milligan played the first night football game in Indiana. In fact, they played four that year. Four night games, 1929. Third down, Shamir Johnson's looking right side. He broke a tackle. First down, and touchdown, Little Giants. 21-yard run for Shamir Johnson, and he'll go over 100 for the game. What are they doing?
Shamir Johnson. Stepped right through one tackle and found pay dirt. His first score of the game, third in two weeks. And that puts him at 108 yards and a touchdown on 15 carries. Another good day for the junior from Merrillville. Tutsie. Snap is good, the hold is down, and the kick is good, and it is now Wabash 38, Hiram 0. Perfect day for Andrew Tutsie. Five for five on extra points and the field goal. He's a uh, tough day to be kicking. And he's done a nice job. Derek Fox, I'll tell you, grabbing those snaps and getting the ball down. Terrific work there. Evan Hansen leads the Little Giants with eight tackles. Tyler McCullen has six and a sack. Connor Ludwig has five hits. Austin Brown, Evan Rutter. Connor Carnes all with three tackles apiece. A.J. Clark, DeLon Pettiford, Ethan Burst with two. Ethan's had a very quiet game. And I suspect we've probably seen the last of the first unit. I would guess on both sides of the ball. Trying to get some scores for you again, get some updates. Whitewater well, ahead of Platteville now. Yeah, I haven't got an update on that one in a while, though. So here's some here are some finals. Denison beats Ohio Wesleyan ten to nine. Jim, looks like three. That's well, we don't on. know if they get. It no, it's that's a final. Okay. Ten to nine. Uh, DePaul ends up big, thirty-eight sixteen over Kenyon. Wittenberg twenty-four does nothing over Worcester. And Oberlin is on top of Allegheny thirty to two after at halftime. This will be Hampton from the fourteen. He's had a pretty good day, and he's got some room to run, and then he meets the little giant tackler. So from Whitewater, Jim, now it is Wisconsin Whitewater 17, Platteville 7. 17 to 7 in the fourth, early in the fourth. Jalen Alston on the special teams tackle for the little giants. Here's a halftime score of 50 to nothing. Mary Harden Baylor winning 50 to nothing. Ahead. All right, second unit in now, Steve. It's time to get out the roster. It's good. Second unit in That's for the Wabash like. defense. That's what we Chris like at Broker, homecoming. number 50. Tucker hands off to Robinson, and Robinson is met by A.J. Clark, who wrestles him down from for a no gain. Number four, Danny Robinson on the carry. Here's number 11, John Carroll, getting beat by three by Ohio Northern with three minutes to go in the game. It's one to watch. Number 11, John Carroll, unranked Ohio Northern. Pep band still cranking along. They are, they're troopers. Robinson cuts it back in the middle and A.J. Clark is there. Two tackles and two plays for A.J. Got a little help from Chris Broker. Yeah, you're a pretty good team when you've got guys like Chris Broker and A.J. Clark <laughs> playing second team. Yeah, you, you know? I was thinking the same thing when you said that, Jim. You're exactly right. That's the kind of depth Eric Rayburn wanted to build on this team where, you know, you weren't, unless they were really special players, you were looking at starters who were juniors and seniors. And this defensive unit has got some very fine seniors playing on second unit. We'll get some names going here pretty soon. Brad Gullinger is in the game, Brownsburg player. Oh, Tucker makes somebody miss an inning. Alston gobbles him up, Jalen Alston. And Chris Broker was in on that play too, so Alston ran him down. Tell you, Jalen Alston's a good looking player. 6'3, 245 pound defensive end. Junior. Kirby Cox standing at the 24 yard line. We've seen the last of Drake Christian today. Durso's kick is pretty good. And look at the coverage team. Wow! 
four white shirts bearing down. Nice punt. He's had some nice punts today. A couple yeah, had, rough ones. Yeah, but the 11 and the 13-yarder, and the rest of them have been great. No kidding. Yeah. Pet band going strong. I love it. Jim Swift cranked that up this year, and it's a combination of alumni and students and staff and faculty and some high school kids, and they're having a great time. Glad to have that back. Thanks to John Goodrich, who made a gift this week to honor the pep band. Appreciate that. Jim Davlin, Lou Salter Pep Band Fund. John Goodrich also helping pointed out. out. Oh, no, no, you can't go that far. I'll tell you, sometimes you just get so excited that you get to play. <laughs> and uh, we don't even know who it is. He's not on our roster. John Goodrich, class of 67. John pointed out to someone that that's the trombone that he played, the same one that they're using now. No way. That's what he said. Okay. I'm just telling you. Well, it might be true. John's I'm just here today. You. He is, John's and here I'm today. looking for him right now. He may have snuck out, but he was here with his son, JB. <laughs> I well, they waved off the flag, Jim, really because there was no contact, yeah. and they should let him get back. I don't have 41 on my roster, so I don't know who it was. All right. Well, it doesn't matter. They, wa they waved it off anyway. So Big you're, kid, middle linebacker. You're clear. <laughs> Run straight ahead. I guess Matt Gibson and a holding penalty would be called on the little giant second-team offensive line. Not exactly what you want. No. When you're trying to kill the clock. 648 and counting down fourth quarter action. Well, you'll see senior Mike Putko in there now, number 10. And, and uh, you know, Connor Rice has is, is, is the full duty now, and he did last week at Wittenberg for the first time. They'd split time last season, a little bit the season before, and so far this season until last week. And, and uh, Michael Putko couldn't be better teammate, Jim, according to Coach Rayburn and what we've seen. And that's not easy, folks. Yeah. Chop block on the offense, number 70 and 71 in a high-low combination. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Trenton Brazel. Brazel, one wide receiver. Oliver Page is another wide receiver, a freshman down on the near side of the field. Offensive lineman. I see, well, I see 79, Connors. 65, Patrick, 70. Patrick Connors, Will Shaw. 71. Jake, Se Jake Norley at center. 73. Yeah. Okay. Brett Wyatt, sophomore from LaFontaine, Southwood right. High School. Some good-looking guys in there, Jim. <clears throat> End around, jet sweep, and we can't get a block out of Trent. <laughs> that was Kirby Cox, uh, who lost yards on the jet sweep, and this drive is going the wrong direction. It's now second and 20 bunch, 23. And Trenton Brazel had uh, no answer. So your second and 23 call is? My second 23 call is? Run it straight ahead? I don't know. No, I think they'll let Michael put the ball in the air here. Probably or we could idea. run it straight ahead. I think it's Gibby. He's working. Hold it's him Matt up, hold Gibson, him up, hold him up, hold him back. Up. Wabash coaches wanted a little uh, penalty. <laughs> I'm not sure it's actually Wabash coaches. I think that was Dad. <laughs> that might have been. Uh, was that uh, Dad Gibson, Gibson, Mr. Gibby? Yeah. Well, if they don't go down to the ground, they're not going to call that. Well, they only gave him a yard. I, I thought All he right. had more than that, but. Ooh, that is a cold wind, Jim. Uh, Dean Raiders has left the friendly confines. Well, now Michael may get a chance to pass. Hopefully he won't yeah. get hit. And he throws a screen to Gibson. Gibson makes oh. one spin move and gets no yards. Ah. So that is a drive that lost. We ran by the 12 yards. The defender. We had a bunch of people out there to block. Whoever was responsible for going outside didn't do it. Wabash down today, Jim, 452 yards offense to Hiram's 121 yards of offense. Wabash 21 of 35 passing. Good day passing, no interceptions. Dominant time of possession difference. All right, Derek Fox is in to punt. See if Hiram comes after him. Hiram being shut out.
Good snap. Not a very good kick and a fair catch at the 41, and it's fumbled. <laughs> so the pressure on the second team Wabash defense, see if they can uh, see if they can hold the line, keep the shutout intact. 38-0 Wabash, 402 to play. We'll go back and think about the keys of the game, Jim. The first key to the game was rushing the football. Wabash had 268 yards rushing or has 268 yards rushing, so check that one off. Early success. Uh, scored on the opening check drive. On that one, but well, scored, scored on the opening drive. That's a good point. Scored on the opening drive and then it was stale for a little bit. Alston was held but, there, uh, but they didn't want to throw the flag. Good point. And then uh, the third one was take care of business, and I, th I think we've done that, and that's just play our game. Got a little flat late in the first a quarter. A little uh, Right, a little flat, but we, we didn't do anything bad we, and, uh, as far as we didn't have a big turnover. We didn't try to do anything stupid, throw the ball up for grabs, things like that that would allow the other team. Didn't give up a block punt, thing, things of that sort. Second straight week, Connor Rice without an interception. Coaches like that. No turnovers for the Little Giants thus far. Cold, wet day. Little Giants have done a pretty good job holding on to the football. Been a few drop passes. Bryant Hicks with the tackle, they tell us. Deontay Simpson, sophomore from Phoenix, in a defensive line position. C.J. McMahon at safety. Giants bring a little blitz, and Jalen Alston will throw him to the turf. Jalen Alston be a starter on most teams in this league. And the pep band with the Imperial Death March from Star Wars. Love, I love it. it. Fourth down now for the Carriers. I can't believe those, those folks are... Sticking with it right straight through the rain and the wind. They sure are. Makes a fun environment even when the crowd is thin. Got a lot of parents hanging out in the crowd at this point. It's mostly parents. They're so with another good kick, and that one's probably going to get down to all. Oh, nope. And Risky by Cox, but kept it from being backed up at the inside the five again. And parents are going to, you know, they're going to stay out. They've done this yep. their whole life. The pet yep. band, like you said, that's impressive. They don't have to There's be no here. reason for them to be here. They could be inside where it's warm, and but they're still up here playing. I love but it. Keep in mind, they started an hour and a half before the game. Yeah, they play outside behind the stadium, folks. So you, those of you, most of you who are still listening, probably know Holl at Little Giant Stadium. So they sit right behind the uh, home stands, behind the fence there, and just play. And play. Well, they wandered around the tailgates. There. I mean, they uh, – Oh, do they, they move around? Yeah, they, they, they'll park in front of a, a so tailgate. A little, they'll play for a couple of minutes. They'll go to another one. Marching yep. pet band out there. Well, kind of, sort of. Yeah, sure. That's and off, cuts it back. It's Gibson, and he gets hit pretty hard. Not a lot of running room. And the tailgate every week seems to be getting more and more condensed. So many, I'm much sorry, more. Condensed? I just mean, right, like behind the stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are more and more tents that seem every time I'm back there. Oh, it's like tent city. And it's, even, I mean, even last year Thursday. in that grass area yeah. behind the stadium, there was open areas. There are no open areas now. People yeah, are just, it's, it's great. And we had soccer going on. What was the final of that? Did we get a final score of that? It was not 3 looking 0 good. when we uh, yeah. came on the air. They played Ohio Wesleyan, nationally ranked. Let me see if I can find that on, uh, on the website. So Matt Gibson got a couple. It'll be second and eight. Anything for our viewers. Come on, Gibby. Hit the hole hard and fast that time, and the uh, offensive line helped out a little. He got out to the 17, gain of five. It'll be third and 12, about Gibson four. They're down at four, and they will have to run a play. So the soccer final, Jim, was Wabash zero, Ohio Wesleyan three, and as you said, Ohio Wesleyan is nationally ranked. 
There we go. Gibson with the carry up the gut. Will not get first down yardage. Well, he might. Nope, he's going to be a yard short. I don't know. I think they Oh, they it. gave it to him. Yeah, they're marking it up here. Okay. That was a That'll favorable mark. Which, you That'll know, basically they know they give him a first down there and the game's over. So, yep. so that will do it. That was a quick last half of the quarter. <laughs> like we like it. The Little Giants are going to go to 4-0. and Depending on which poll you like, they're in the top ten. And uh, the defense looks like the real deal. 38-0, Wabash over Hiram on homecoming. Just because we were talking about soccer, soccer now is 8-2-1 and two and one overall, having a great season under Coach Coach Culler. Start off 8-0. Last three games have been a little rougher. But there's some good teams in the conference. So we'll, we'll talk to Coach Rayburn in just a moment. For now, we're going to take a 30-second timeout. We will be back to Hollett Little Giant Stadium right after this. Well, a dominating performance for the Little Giants. Hiram put together one drive. Went nine plays and 65 yards, got down inside the Wabash five yard line and the defense shut the door. Hiram turned the ball over on downs and the entire rest of the game only put together about another 70 yards. So this Little Giant defense is for real. Records the shutout. Second shutout of the season, third game in four that they've allowed a field goal or less. Hiram with just eight first downs, 39 yards rushing, 98 yards passing, an interception, and another dominant game by the Wabash defense. Didn't see quite as many big plays, sacks, interceptions as we saw last week, but I think the uh, weather conditions had a lot to do with that, and this little giant team just wanted to take care of business, and they ran the ball very effectively. Churned out 278 yards on the ground, 185 through the air. Connor Rice with another terrific performance, and we're going to send it down to Clayton Randolph, who is with head coach Eric Rayburn and on the field. So let's take it away, Clayton. Hey, thank you, Jim and Steve. Coach, another fantastic victory you know, this afternoon. Talk a little bit about that for us. Uh, yeah, obviously, yeah, I felt like we played well. Uh, uh, obviously, to get a shutout, uh, defense has to play outstanding and uh, offensively you know I felt like we moved the ball well and and uh, uh, running and throwing and uh, you know I had little things you know uh, had some penalties uh, on offense that killed some drives and uh, we had a few drop balls today too but uh, other than that uh, real happy offensively and defensively how big of a factor does the weather play into a game like this you know it was uh, you know more wind than what we're than what we've uh, played in so far so yeah, you know, I think that, that probably had more of an effect on uh, the kicking game than anything else. Uh, you know, I thought Connor handled the wind, uh, you know, was pretty accurate with his throws. So um, I, I don't think the ball got too slick, but uh, uh, so I, I, I didn't think the weather was uh, too big of an issue. Mason had a really good game over 100 yards today after uh, sitting out most of last week. His performance uh, helped you get 38 points tonight yeah uh, you know obviously uh, after last week you know we, we were happy to have mason back um you know he got off, got off to a little slow start there uh uh fumbled early you know that first drive but uh, uh but from that point on you know i thought he ran really hard and uh made guys miss broke some tackles uh so I, yeah i thought he had a really uh really good game you held the uh, Terriers to under 100 yards throwing and under 50 yards, uh, I believe, rushing. That's a, is this defense one of the best you've coached? You know, I mean, obviously we've only played four games, but uh, through four games, I mean, they, they've they done a great job against the run. And uh, anytime you can do that, uh, you know, just uh, it makes it difficult on offense when, when you can't run the football, you know. And, and uh, so we, we've, uh, we've played good run defense, and then we've gotten – uh, gotten pressure on the quarterback, and you know that's a pretty good combination. Coach, thanks, and fantastic win today. Thank you. 
Jim and Steve are off to Oberlin next week, and it should be a, uh, another fun one for the Little Giants. Back to you guys. Thank you again for weathering the storm on the sideline to be with us today, Clayton. And uh, Clayton and Brent Harris and the Wabash Sports Information Group will be on the road next week at Oberlin, and uh, we look forward to their uh, coverage of that contest. The Little Giants on a roll, 4-0. and and this defense is for real. The running game is for real. And Connor Rice looks like he's got a terrific arm, Steve. As a former quarterback, you got to like the velocity and the strength of his left arm. And, you know, the accuracy just keeps getting better and better. Well, I like his strength a lot. And, and the thing is, he, he makes it look easy. I mean, even off his back foot sometimes, he'll flip the ball out. And, and uh, threw, he threw a couple away uh, just by flicking it out there. And so it's pretty impressive. And, and again, I, fe I felt like during the last game when he was – in there every snap. He got better from play one to play 90 or however many plays we had last week. And I just feel like every time he's on the field now, he's, he's, he's feeling confident. So the strong arm will get you out of a lot of things and it'll allow you to make passes other people can't make. He threw a lot to the sideline today. Not easy to do. And uh, so yeah, so I like the way he's running the offense. 21 of 35 was Connor Rice, 184 yards a touchdown, ran for two touchdowns and had at least five passes dropped at least five, and made one pass across his body the other way against the grain while he was running right through back left. Not a play very many quarterbacks can make. So that's strong uh, game for Connor Rice. Again, no turnovers, no big mistakes. Missed a couple guys, but not many. Um, I think he's uh, growing into his own. It's the little giants are posing for pictures and talking to mom and dad on the sideline. So, not much else to say about this one. Pretty dominating performance by the Little Giant defense. Evan Hansen led the team. The freshman with eight tackles had a tackle for a loss. Tyler McCullen was all over the field, had a big first half, had six tackles and a sack. Connor Ludwig had a sack. Jalen Alston had a sack. DeLon Pettiford had three pass breakups, did a nice job today. It's nice to see some younger guys get in on the uh, uh, action. Um, Jalen Olsen, we don't get to see him very often. He's a very athletic player, made a couple tackles, only played one series. L.V. Bowden with his first career interception. And uh, key point in the ball game. So, Little Giants improved to 4-0. Wabash 38, Hiram 0. And see our broadcast crew. Thank you so much, Adam and Philip, for getting us on the air. It didn't look like we were going to be on the air today. It had some network difficulties. Ivan and Ben were up here in the booth with us. Aaron and Carlos down in the elements. Thank you, Dom. Thank you, Darian. You guys are great. On behalf of all those folks and Steve Hoffman, I'm Jim Amadon saying so long, everybody. It's Wabash 38, Hiram 0.